All right. What'd you guys decide? Well, everybody else left. Okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining episode 21 of the Gray Brotherhood Actual Play Campaign. 30 years ago, we were comrades at the West Point War Games Club. Now we've come together again to play Adventure or Conquer a King System Imperial Imprint, or Axe 2. If you're just now joining the campaign, be sure to check the description below for a link to the annals of the Gray Brotherhood. Anytime you need a refresher, you can check the link in the description to review everything that's gone before. We resume the adventure at 10 a.m. on the 9th of Vinethelin. The Grey Brothers are in the sewers of Cipheron, where Skandara the Red has just spotted a secret door. Mm. All right. So if you hop over to Skandara, uh, you can see the little secret door she has discovered. And I think she already did the check for traps. She did. Uh, right before the zombies attacked. So... Got it. Okay. All right. Well, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys think that we should ex let's check out this one secret door and then let's head back to the surface? I believe Terenius made his casts or at least his second level cast for the day, correct? Yes. Yeah. And Raymond's done one of his. Yeah. And so Tusi needs some clothes. <laughs> he, he needs and he needs some clothes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so, so you guys want to head some, up to the uh, surface? No, we're gonna check the door first. Yeah. yeah, we'll check. We'll check this. We'll uh, we'll do this, and then we'll head to the surface. Should we get some heavies up there? Yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody heavy to open uh, the door. I will play. I'll play Raymond till he shows up. Sure. Okay. And um, Higwack will go ahead and open the door. Okay, the, that's fine. The door opens and uh, it reveals just a very short um, 10 foot by 10 foot room, uh, largely empty. Looks like it might be a tunnel through collapsed um, Elven construction. Okay. Um, beyond that, um, I'm going to motion to Skandara and ask Skandara to give it a good search. Okay. Yep. She'll, she'll search. And it, it doesn't go any further down here, though, this way it looks like? Or is that kind of... Well, go ahead and move. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Tiny little room. No, no, none of the walls... The, are the walls all uh, uh, tough or are they... Remember, like, there was that one place we passed last time which had looked like it was soft or like we could bore through. Is it any of it look like that or is it all walls? Old elven walls. Um, it is a tunnel through tough. Um, it seems okay. to be following the line of some ancient exterior wall that was covered by ash. Okay. I um, mean, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do a search for um, secret doors. Okay, go blind ahead and give me a blind GM roll, please. Yes. All right. Um, she says uh, she doesn't find anything. It's just an empty little storage closet in the sewers. Okay. Well, that's tantalizingly irksome. <laughs> what do you think about having Horaeus move up and cast Detect Evil on the closet and see if he can sense anything? That works for me. Okay. Reyes moves up behind Castanus, and at will sees if he can sense evil. All right, so uh, Horaeus reaches out to the divine powers that um, uh, manifest in him, and um, he, defect, he detects a uh, strong source of evil in Terenius's left breast pocket. <laughs> 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 Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> the enemy is here. Surely not I. <laughs> it's the the enemy within. <laughs> so. 
Well, I guess uh, unless anybody's got anything else, I think we make to make for the surface. Get uh, get Raymond healed up and uh, get washed up. Get uh, let's close the let's close the door first, and okay. once again do that whole little thread thing just to see if it ever opens up again if we happen to go by it. Um, also, a thought is you know if this is just a secret door that nobody notices, it could be a, a place where we could stash stuff if we needed to. <laughs> good, good idea. Um, good idea. But uh, if nothing else, okay. So uh, we'll do we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. How well, close is the nearest sewer grate? I remember they were pretty much pretty common. We will have to switch to another map for that. Oh, did we did we search the skeletons? Let's search the skeletons first, also. Yeah. We kind of closed with that. So let's search the skeletons, see if there's anything useful on them. Uh, there is not. It's just various okay. junk and bad hand weapons and scraps of leather and grave goods and things. You know, since we're going back up, should we just get the... Remember there was 200, gold, 200 coins? I don't know that there are gold. Should we get some of those coins to bring something out? Well, we could... Well, do we want? Do we want to? I guess the first question is: Do we want to backtrack, or do we want to? It's it's right here. To a grave. It's right around the corner. I don't know exactly where it is on this map, but there's there's some stairs going up, maybe around here somewhere. I think. Or over here, maybe. But it was it was right in this area. Um, there's a cavern on the north side, which I think is where we're standing in now. Yeah. And. Yeah, so it was this. I think it was right here. If yeah, it it seems pretty fishy. Let's go. If, but yeah, we can go give it a check again and see what and see what we see. It was yeah. It was this we, were moving, was, we, we were moving pretty quick through that area too, weren't we? I think um, I, I seem to remember. We paused there for a little bit, and we we kind of poked the coins, and, <laughs> and they're covered in muck, and we're like, I don't know if we want to touch those. Are we that poor? But you know what? Maybe they're like ancient elven coins or something. Something interesting. Yeah, let, let's investigate a little further at the very least and decide whether or not, you know, it's worth the, uh, you know, the burning hands of uh, yeah. cleaning those things off. Pick up one of the coins. I'll, I'll pick up one of the coins and see if it's interesting. A poke, yeah, a poke at it with a, with a spear. We already did that. And oh. Did, oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So, um, so this was uh, the scattering of coin and bone in a mound. They're on, they're on the top of like steps or something like that, leading into an oven yeah. chamber that was empty. Yeah, I think right around there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm just making sure. So it, was, it isn't. It isn't just like coins. It's like a pile of muck. Yeah. It was like it was bone. Yeah. And, yeah. Something sketchy looking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so there actually might be other stuff in there too. I didn't. Catch why I'm clarifying yeah. what, what exactly it is. Yeah, it isn't just like a pile of coin. So, what what did you want to do? Yeah, well, let's let's well let's prod it with a spear. Yeah, let's prod it with a spear first. Make sure nothing jumps out. Uh, all right, who's doing that? Um, I can do it. I'm feeling gutsy. Who, who is I? You're all controlling. Multiple. And Dravis. <laughs> Dravis will do it. <laughs> I, me personally. Lead from okay. the front. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With my spear. Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, using your spear. Okay. Um, so, Jonathan, go ahead and make a searching throw for me. Is that a private D twenty? No, you can a make blind a blind D. But D20? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So, um, when you poke the mound, um, you reveal uh, about a dozen to 15 inch long segmented cylindrical maggots adorned all over with tiny bristling setae, the color of white bone and yellow pus with fleshy heads that terminate in hook-like mandibles. And um, 
they uh, seem to be um, twitching around trying to detect what has disturbed their refuse pile. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> How big are they? Oh, they're like an inch. You know, they're just maggots. But just oh, making so sure, maggots. I mean, we got attacked by dragonflies <laughs> and, well, they were more than just dragonflies. <laughs> Oh, we had that heroic battle against the half-hit dice uh, giant centipedes. <laughs> right. These are these are uh, about an inch long, so they are you know relatively large maggots, but they are not giant maggots or maggots of unusual size or something. <laughs> they are quite foul to look upon. I'm thinking about you know what do you think about the... put them to oh, sleep. Nothing in. The... Oh, I guess we could do that. I was thinking about, uh, um, you know, dropping some burning oil on them. <laughs> thinking about that way. So, uh, I mean, we could just stomp on them. Yeah, let's use let's use the oil. That's fine. It's a good. I like that. Unless you think <sighs> they don't look like anything unusual, do they? They like some kind of weird maggot that we've never seen before. Some unearthly thing. The way you described you have, them was a little confusing. Do you have naturalism proficiency? I feel like I should have something like that. You have two ranks, don't you? Yes. Or, I have naturalism. Right, I'll come two with naturalism. Yeah. Go ahead and make a naturalism proficiency throw. Uh, can, can I click on it? No. Just roll d20. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Castanus, uh, you are, you know, you step up to take a look at them and your heart stops in terror because these are not at all the ordinary common sort of grubs that eat rotting meat and grow into flies. These are murder maggots. They can fling themselves a distance of up to five feet with a single launch and then they begin to burrow into the human body and soon kill the victim. Oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> I'm going to back up hastily as soon as I realize that. I relay this information. <laughs> Kill it with fire. It's the only yes. way to be sure. <laughs> I was considering putting them to sleep, but I don't think that's a good idea now. I don't want to risk having those around. <laughs> okay. Can we throw some military oil on them? Yeah. yeah. Just don't mess with the military oil. Everybody on one side. Well, everybody back up first. <laughs> back up more than five feet away from those things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, can we just toss it from 10 feet? I mean, hopefully we can't miss yeah. by too much yeah. by tossing it from Toss 10, it from 10, 10 feet, feet, you know? Good, good, good call. It deviates 20 feet the wrong direction. And you're like, what? <laughs> I throw it back listen, like listen, at West Point, man, there was this time I had to run up to a wall and just chuck a grenade over the wall. It's all I had to do. I chucked the grenade, it goes up, it hit a tree branch, I didn't see, it fell in my lap, and I had to jump to the other side of the wall to avoid the wall oh. up. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, natural <laughs> ones can happen. Was that one of those dummy grenades where just the top kind of, the top part kind of exploded? Yeah, but I mean, it was literally on my, you know. Yeah, 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 the, the, yeah. I mean, I remember, I remember them saying, don't hold it in your hand, you'll turn your hand into uh, ribbons if you... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, exactly. It can still do bad. <laughs> Exactly. So it's pretty funny though, because then I hadn't destroyed the target with the grenade, and like so the the you know the drill cadet was like looking at me, and so I was like, I will destroy it with bayonets. <laughs> and, just, just, and, <laughs> and he's just like, McCree's, you're so ate up. <laughs> anyway, um, who's throwing? Who's throwing the grenade? Let's both. I'm, let's, I'm, I'll, I'll throw one. I'll throw one, and Andravis throw one. No, that's that's two chances for a botch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not that big of an area, right? Um, I'll have one ready. How about that? I'm, I'll have a I'll have a a borrowed Griffin's lantern, and I'll have a military oil right next to it. So if Cassius <laughs> has some issues, as soon as I see where it lands, I'll throw one. <laughs> it is misses. <laughs> Okay, ready? Okay, roll it. Oof. Oof. (laughs) (laughs) 
Good job. Good job. You managed to miss. Let's roll for scatter. D12. <laughs> Six means it comes back towards you. <laughs> oh, for, yeah. First is D12. <laughs> roll D10 for number of feet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So it 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 literally so Andravis goes to throw it and he just doesn't realize how low the ceiling is and so he goes up and the bottle breaks and lands two feet to his left and <laughs> so Andravis I need a saving throw versus blast from you. Oh, that was Castinus. Or Castinus yeah. rather. Oh I'm sorry, yeah. Castinus, yes. <laughs> All right, so Castanus manages to shield himself with his cloak and is not uh, hurt. Um, <laughs> all right, well, the uh, I think the loud explosion and the fire is probably going to trigger... Um, <laughs> probably going this to is, trigger. This, that was Zakiti from Beyond the Grave thwarting us. <laughs> The murder maggots. Um, <sighs> Terenius, if you want to put them to sleep, you can do so. Otherwise, I'll I'll just take it into combat. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna put them to sleep. All right. I think so, I will invest my last spell on this. So we right. don't. Yeah, we're, die. We're, we're, we're gonna get out of here after this. So the maggots begin <laughs> okay. to squirm and writhe towards you, and Terenius uh, puts them to sleep. <laughs> okay. All is well. All right. Well. <laughs> Who'd like to search the treasure now? <laughs> I I can still search the treasure. All right. <laughs> to do well, now they're asleep. Do we want to collect them and try to do something with them as monster parts, or do we want to burn them while they're safe to burn? Ooh. So, um, good idea. Murder maggots. That's just... The description of them is just horrible. Yeah, there's 15 of them, and they're worth uh, five gold pieces each to an alchemist if you want to. Uh... Hmm. 55 gold. Let's see you cast them. Should we burn them? Burn I mean, we're right, uh, we're right below town. It's 10 a.m., so I bet, you, I bet you you have no problem you know, getting to an alchemist in, in, in a fairly short period of time. Well, Although, it's, how long it's, does it's, slumber last? Yeah. I don't That's think this thing is going to last long enough. Yeah, I'm thinking, does it say? Well, can they not go to season if they're dead? Duration. Next year's spell. I can look do it they up. Have to be, you do they have to be alive to be of use to the alchemist? No, they can be They can be dead. But we didn't, okay. but we didn't bring any of our harvesting tools with us. So I think we just... Sure. Squish. Let's burn them or squish them. Yeah, squish okay. them and squish them. All right, and, so you burn them and squish them. The grubs, uh, the, the the grubs die gruesomely. The murder maggots have passed away. It's a homicide. <laughs> All right, now what, gentlemen? Let's search the pile. Okay, this better be good. Uh, the pile has uh, a total of seventy-four gold pieces in it. Uh, looks to have scattered out of some hapless adventurer's pouch. He must, oh. have, gotten, he must have gotten rot grubbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> nasty. <laughs> yes, big adventure, 74 gold pieces. <sighs> All right. So All let's right. gather those up and sluice them off yep. with the water skin. <laughs> yep. And, <laughs> Pack them away. Let's, let's get out of here. All right. So um, what direction do you want to head? The, we... the south west was where we came from. So I imagine the, the nearest great in that direction? Uh, yes, that is correct. There is a grate to the southwest. Let's do it. Yep. Okay, so are you going to move at combat speed or exploration speed? Let's move at, this, at the slower one. We don't... The slower we're... one. Yeah. Just, just to make sure. Yep. Okay. So, um, no problem. You, uh... 
you get to here and you see the uh, sewer grate. It's right there. Oh, that's at the intersection? Mm -hmm. Okay. You see it? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Right there. So uh, you, are welcome, you are welcome to scale up uh, and uh, get that open if you'd like. Yep. Let's let's go up and uh, wash up and, and rest and get ready for a delve the next day. And oh, we need to get Toothy some armor and some clothing, and maybe yeah. Uh, and and um, Higlack needs another hand axe. Griffin needs another spear. Um, okay. Yeah. So a couple things to take care of, but. I'm curious where we came out in the uh, in the old city. How how much of, of an area we covered? Also, mm, indeed, I will. Uh, I will tell you that in one sec. Actually, um, okay. I will show you exactly where you emerge. All right. So uh, the sewer grate is not locked and pushes open easily, as if uh, it is frequently used. And um, you guys scale up the ladder up to it. And you emerge. All right. And let's see. You guys emerge right there. Is it night? Because I can't see. No, I no, just think, I think the lantern rules are in play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me fix that. There you go. There we go. Oh wow. Okay. Yes. Because so you have emerged, emerged, entered somewhere up here, right? You have emerged immediately yeah. next to the Merchant Guild House, situated at the wow. northern edge of the Emporium, overlooking the Grand Kestathimatas or Memorial Street. And so, to the south, you can see um, all of the, uh, the 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 vast plaza, six hundred by four hundred feet of the Emporium, with um, fine shops and stores and an open air marketplace with a mosaic of colorful tents, covered wagons, and cart stands. We actually covered quite a bit of the old district in our little yeah. foray there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, probably about a, as much as a quarter of it, maybe. We must have just gone in quite a ways in one direction. Yeah, I think we did. Well, we, we, start, we started up here, um, and then we zigzagged south, maybe somewhat along here, and then we zigzagged this way, and then back over here, and then we branched back up. I might begin this way wrong, but, you know, kind of that idea. Um, so, um, interesting. We might have actually gotten somewhat close to the um, Argolian Brotherhood's area. Is that the the, the red dotted line down there um, in the lower section? Um, that lower area down there is like the um, thieves quarter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you guys have just emerged out of the sewers and it's not what it looks like. <laughs> Come out with it. Yeah, we maybe no should, we, we should visit the, um, the 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 guardhouse or something like that. The city watch and get some sort of papers authorizing us to be carrying weapons because we keep getting accosted <laughs> by the watch. Yeah, uh, no one pays a lot of mind to you. It's it's, you know, the thickest part of the market when everybody is rushing in to begin the day's trading. Uh, there's people everywhere and you guys, you know, emerge out of the sewers. Um, uh, Toothy Turno gets a few funny looks. Um, he's got a sack. Yeah. Can we just, like, I, don't know, he's sack. I give him a cloak. He's, he's, and, got, uh, he's, he's, he's got my cloak on. <laughs> and uh, one woman says, uh, damn shame with the prefect's budget cuts. Super custodians can't even afford clothes anymore. She wanders <laughs> off. <laughs> Toothy's like, I'm not a custodian. He's like, and they're laying them off. Oh. <laughs> All right. What do you guys want to do? Okay. So uh, a couple of a couple of things that I think we should do. One is. Both Terreno and I believe Skandara 
have the streetwise skill. Mm -hmm. And I think we probably need to do a little bit more research topside so that we don't blunder into somebody that we don't want to blunder. Like if some, if there's people that have got areas staked out in the sewers, I'm just, I'm thinking we should, we should probably know who they are. And uh, anyway, so that's, so that's one thing to do in addition. So uh, Raymond's got a heal. Uh, Willie's got to sleep. Um, Casting is going to do some shopping for everybody. And I think everybody needs to take a, sh- everybody needs to go to the baths. So I was going to say, we all need days. to get cleaned first. Yeah. Cause so probably, what? probably two days. What do you think? All right. Well, if you want to go to the bath to get cleaned up, um, the baths are in um, one of the other districts, the public baths. They're very nice. <laughs> it's up to you. They're in the tower district. Okay. Uh, those, that, was, that was my thoughts. Anybody... Uh, thoughts from anybody else? Sure, we're living high life. We want to put a, put forth a good face. And we'll yeah, go to the baths as opposed to you know just using a sink. <laughs> yeah, I, I well, I'm sure that indoor plumbing is not a thing. So uh, no, it is. Yeah, basin. It's totally a thing. Okay. Well, okay. So um, I've hopped you over to the main Cithron map, and. Uh, so you can see that's how much you moved, guys. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I don't, but more than I thought. So that's that's nice to get that perspective. Yeah. So yeah. it's cool. Yeah. So um, the uh, the tower district is right here. So you can see the remember the green lines I had marked out for you was the uh, right. border of the old district and the thieves quarter. Um, and the. Uh, The public baths are um, located right here. I'm sorry. They are located right here. So just northwest of the Tower of Knowledge. The mages are very fastidious, so they uh, they are pleased to be near the, the baths. Heading there? Yep. 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 Okay. So let's see. Got to go down this way. So that is one, two, three blocks, four, five, six blocks. Eight blocks. Nine blocks. I was just checking the rule book, Sean. Um, yeah, the Thieves and Aria actually also has Streetwise. So we have three folks with Streetwise. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay. So... Uh... Andravis, do you level at 8,000? I am like 40 points away. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> no, you're 17 points away. Now. Oh, 17 now. All right. Oh, I missed the, we got just got some experience points. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we find 12 more maggots and I'm there. Yeah, we just need to squish a couple more maggots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, because the streets are so crowded and you're a relatively large party and anyone who's ever tried to move through New York City with a large party of people knows how slow going it is because people are constantly getting cut off and they have to stop at the intersections and things like that. So it's slow going as you push your way into um, the Tower District, which is um, the northwest border of which is the western bank of the Murman. The southwestern border is marked by the city's old walls. In the northeast, it ends at the Imperial Walls. And of course, the Saruman Sur, the Tower of Knowledge, dominates the skyline and overshadows the otherwise impressive public baths. Um, so the public baths uh, are your destination here. But let us see if you get there. 
if we see like a uh, a clothes shop along the way, should we stop and get Stuthi some clothes? I, I assumed I did the shopping as we passed through the Emporium because it That's was right, fine. It was right on the That's way. <laughs> Although Toothy might not want to change into clothes until he bathes. But, All, right. Uh... <laughs> All right. So um, you arrive at the public baths and um, so... Um, now, the baths are open to all sexes and all social classes from sunup to sundown every day. Um, but by custom, certain groups patronize the public baths at certain hours. Lower class women patronize it in the early morning, patrician women in the late morning. So it is, um, by the time you get there, it is about 11, 10 a.m. So um, the patrician women are going to be finishing up um, at noon, the lower class men begin to take their baths. So um, when you go in, there's an entrance fee of two copper pieces each uh, for the group as a whole that works out to like, what's that? There's 15 of you, so like three silver pieces. Yep. Um, and uh, the attendant uh, collects, the, uh, collects the entrance fee and takes into the changing room where there's a laboratory, a set of wooden benches, and a string of closets holding thick sold sandals and linens. Well, I, th I think if it's just a matter of like an hour or a half an hour, we should probably wait for our customary time to, to enter. Well, Skandara and Arya and whatnot can go in now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they, they can head on in. And maybe they can work some streetwise with... Oh, no, this is the patrician woman. Never mind. <laughs> Same as the lower class. Like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think those are the only two women we have in our party now, right? Oh, no, I'm Zayadana. That's right. Zayadana, yeah. This is quite interesting. Okay, so... Um, boy, I feel bad for poor Newton not being here for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when the ladies go in into... Um, uh, uh, make their way into the um, uh, the warm lounge where there are massage couches and about seven attendants waiting with scented oils, bronze strigils, and linen towels. And um, they see that there are um, three other patrons uh, present. Um, one of them is one of the most attractive women you've ever seen. She's an ageless beauty. She has platinum hair, silver eyes that betray an uh, elven ancestry. And um, she has a, an almost otherworldly aura of, of personal magnetism around her that um, draws your eyes towards her. Um, uh, next to her and... Um, Uh, is a woman, um, looks to be about, you know, mid twenties. Um, her, she has the, the body, uh, the supple body and, and strength of a dancer. Um, she has fair skin and auburn hair that, um, you know, betrays a Rornish ancestry. Um, and she is chatting with the exceptionally beautiful. She's also quite attractive, although not quite as ravishing as the first. Um, and, um, there's one other woman there. Um, which is um, a, uh, a, a, an attractive, although not as beautiful as the other two, an attractive um, but clearly noble-born woman um, that uh, seems to be... Um, of higher social rank than the other two, um, but uh, but sort of patronizing to them and amused by them. And uh, they are quietly chatting amongst themselves as the ladies enter. Well, the good news is all three of the, the ladies in our party have 13 plus charisma <laughs> themselves. So. All right, so uh, when they arrive, the um, the uh, attendants uh, come and take off their robes and begin to oil their backs start to do massage, et cetera. Um, 
and uh, okay. Since they're hinges, I don't know how exactly how we role play them since they're not us. But uh, you can roll. You can role play the hinges for the time being. Whoever whoever is in there. I've got Skandar. Newton plays Zeodana, so if Sean's taking Newtons, I don't remember who has Arya. Who hired Arya? I think Newton hired Arya too. Okay, oh, yeah, Newton. Yeah. Oh yeah. So not not only yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. So Sean, why don't you take Zeodana? Jonathan, you take Arya the elf. And who I'll take Skandar because oh, you got mine. Skandar. So then uh, Grant or Willie, you want to take Arya the elf? I'll take Arya the elf. Okay. Okay. Very good. Oh, we're benching our best role player. <laughs> not me oh you're a bad yeah you're hilarious really. but anyway well, I think Skandar would mostly just listen in to see if she catches any snippets to begin with yeah okay so um, so uh, the um, the exceptionally beautiful woman um says um she says have you heard about perfect basilio he's gone mad i heard he hired assassins to murder the merchants that he suspects of smuggling goods to evade taxes There'll be no trials, just dead bodies dumped in the river as a warning to the Argolian family. It's no rule of law anymore in Cifron. Um, the, uh, that was the platinum haired woman of Elvish bloodline said that. Um, the supple dancer like woman says, I'm sure your brother is very troubled about it. And uh, she says, he is, he is. Uh, and then she turns to the, um, uh, the other woman, the noble one, and she says, um, uh, uh, Lady Dracomir, uh, would you perhaps speak to the prefect on behalf of my brother? And um, she smiles and she says, I've been known to do a favor for a friend when it's worth my time. Um, but then they sort of notice uh, you guys there. And, uh, and one of them says, quite unseasonable weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so Zaya Donna, after she uh, after she elegantly removes her outfit and is now dressed appropriately for the baths, uh, strikes up small talk about weather, etc., crowds, baths, um, etc., and then weaves in a a comment about large rats in the sewers. Okay, give me a uh, reaction roll. She's at plus one for her. No, it's a two die six, not a die 20 for reaction. That's good, hopefully be a better roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. So she got a total of eight um but to be plus one because she's got a charisma of yep plus 14. one for charisma nine and you get a bus you get a bonus to reaction rolls with patrons in the public baths because of the collegial atmosphere and um yeah so um the uh, the woman um, who spoke first with the platinum hair, and um, and she says, "Oh, you've heard about that too? Those young wizards running around the sewers of the old city. Ah, uh, I can't decide if I think they're magically exterminating vermin or if they're part of a mad rat cult." And um, at which point, um, Valara says, "Do you think maybe it's it's the Brotherhood?" And um, so, and uh, and the first woman, the 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 platinum-haired beauty, says, "Well, I mean, I know for a fact the Brotherhood of Knives is still in business, but I don't think they've got wizards in their employ." Mm. They uh, they say, "Oh, we should. I guess we should introduce ourselves." Um, and 
the first woman says, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Hesta Faunus. Uh, you may know my brother, Lieber Faunus, the proprietor of the mink. Um, the supple dancer says, um, I'm uh, Valara. I'm in charge of the local order of blade dancers in the temple district. And then, um, and, uh, and then Hestephanus says, and of course, Lady Adara Dracomir, the daughter of Councilman Dracomir, needs no introduction. And she nods and uh, says, well, uh, salutations. Enchanted. Well, Zeodana, as a blade dancer, would probably, yeah. I would imagine, speak to the local order leader of the local order of blade dancers, right? Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And okay. Yeah, she'll. Yeah, I guess she'll. She'll slowly, you know, just kind of like introduce herself, small blade dancer talk, etc. Okay, so um, so she is clearly Rornish, and um, she um, she seems quite young to be um a, a head of a temple district. Blade dancers, um, and uh, she says, um, "Do you come from Sidonos's uh, blade dancers?" Then they they, tra they train well there. Yes. They train well there. She says, um, "Here, I, I'm afraid we're going soft. There's uh, not much for a blade dancer to do." in Cifron, apart from protect the dancers of the veil and the sacred courtesans, she kind of frowns and looks depressed. When was the As, last time, and she, so Zayadon asks, when was the last time you had a chance to, to adventure, to show your mettle? Oh, well, she says, ah, uh, well, and then Hesta speaks up and she says, oh, she's too modest to admit it. But she won her permit, her current position after leading a crusade to annihilate beastmen from several key mountain passes in Chrysaea. Now she's upset to be promoted. <laughs> I, I'm not upset to be promoted. I, I just thought I was better in the field. Adara says the only thing the field is good for is picnics. <laughs> now at this point, they uh, they say they've they've at this point finished their massages and str stridulating the oils off of them, so they excuse themselves. And um, they say, "I'd hurry up. The grubby sorts start to come in in a few minutes. You don't want to be here when they arrive." <laughs> Good advice. Good uh, day, ladies. Skandar will, Skandar will say as they, as they depart. She'll say, uh, "We happen to be staying at the." She'll say to Hestephanus, "Well, we're staying at the Mink. If you have any messages for your brother." Oh, um, she, uh, she looks at you kind of, uh, slyly and, um, so, uh, Skandar, give me a, um, give me a streetwise check, please. Okay. Is that just uh, D20? Yes. Is that blind? You're looking for an 11. No. Plus. You can, yeah, you can make it public. Okay. Oh yeah, nineteen. <laughs> okay. So you are um, you're looking at Hestephanus, who clearly has elvish blood, and um, you are you suddenly remember something that you had heard once, which is um, that um, her brother. Lieber Faunus is no ordinary merchant. He's actually one of the most dangerous men in the city. And uh, working with him is expensive, but it's less expensive than the tax collector. He's the chief smuggler of goods into the old district. Mm. Or so you've heard. So uh, she looks at you and she says, um, she says, oh, uh, I'll see him later today. No worries. Thank you, though. Oh, that's good. That's helpful. Uh, 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 Skandara is going to say as she departs, oh, 
um, well, should should I happen to be there, maybe I can tell you some of my tales of the high seas. Um, she said, uh, uh, Skandar, give me a reaction roll, actually. Let's see what she thinks okay. of you. <laughs> And I'm putting the plus one for her charisma in there. Oh. <laughs> um, she uh, uh, she kind of eyes you over, and she says, um, "In fact, I bet you're exactly the sort of person that has a lot of interesting tales that she doesn't talk about." We'll see you tonight at the Mink. Come by. <laughs> well, that was excellent. That was <laughs> nice job, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay for that with bad rolls later, but I'm certainly enjoying yeah. it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was cool. Good stuff. Um, well, the rest of we don't we don't need to go into the gory details of the bathing experience, but it basically involves a cold room, then a warm room, then a hot room, then a sauna, uh, and uh, and then a departure. So um, it's very pleasant. Okay, you guys have now cleaned yourselves of the filth. The men have a much less exciting time because it's all the lowbrow guys in there. Um, so, might uh, Toothy do a little bit of streetwise while he's in there? See if he finds out anything. Yeah, let's see if there's anyone of interest in there for him to talk to. All right, let's see. All right. Um, so, uh, Toothy Streetwise identifies that the the, the noontime crowd is the the city's plebeians who have little of interest to say, and um, he knows more about what's going on than they do. All right. Okay. So you guys have now finished bathing. Uh, the total process is probably, let's say, was, you know, it was, uh, uh, what we say, 11, uh, 11.30 to 12.30, probably. So you have finished. Now, what would you like to do? We can fast forward the clock, obviously. You don't need yeah. to narrate it moment by Oh, moment. you do still have, remember, we did, we did loot the, um, from our kills last week, was it centipede something or other? We threw the mm. dead centipedes into a sack, so if we wanted to do any kind of monster part dealing with that or extricating of them, I don't think we had. We didn't. We didn't yeah, you, could, you could just you could go sell the sell the centipedes. Okay. I didn't write. I didn't write down how many we we collected. It was four, and I don't think we searched them. I don't think I don't think William did any kind of analysis because that, that would have taken too long, and we had that spell burning. Mm -hmm. So I don't think yeah. he did any trying to figure out what's good in them. Uh, we just threw them into a sack. <laughs> yeah, so their yeah. um, their bundles of legs and their mandibles are valuable. They're worth a total of six gold pieces each. So it's twenty four gold pieces. You can sell those at the Tower of Knowledge, no problem. Okay. 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 Then I think we just go get go back and get ready to uh, to do some networking at the Mink tonight. All right, sounds good. Head on down to the Mink. This is incredibly fortuitous, I feel, for us. Well, especially for you as a uh, um, smuggler, you're <laughs> right. All right, so you got. It. Well, if he's a uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, who knows what he knows? Be a really good contact. He's, it would yeah, be a really good just, contact for you for your business. Well, mm. and it, he'll also. Well, yeah, I think we should try to figure out whose turf to stay away from if we're going in the sewers. Yeah. Or if there, or or if there, I mean, if there's, if he's a, yeah, if there's anybody down there, or if there's uh, ways we can, you know, mark that we're okay, we're acceptable in that area. Yeah, All that's right. kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right, so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll put you guys in the mink here.
Oh, it looks like I never, um, oh, my mistake. Tragically, I never uploaded the mink map onto, uh, into the scene. Let me see if I, I can do that real quick now. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. It's an in. Um, all right. So, uh, so uh, the, the mink is located midway between the Castatur Daran and the Emporium, snuggled amongst the homes of the city's native merchants. Um, it's not luxurious, but it's well appointed. It impresses adventurers and visiting merchants. Has everything you'd want: fresh bed, strong drink, rich food, lively music, attractive companions. Um, it's open from late morning, closes after midnight. And um, so, uh, when you enter the common room, um, there's a bar, nine large tables, masonry hearth, and uh, kegs lined up behind the bar. Water, beer, and vinegar. There's a stuffed mink of exceptional size mounted above the bar, and then there's the. Uh, Challed, uh, scrawled slab of slate displays the tavern menu. Um, there are two tavern workers and uh, about eight patrons currently in there. Um, you see a number of, number of shady looking characters uh, look like local toughs providing security. And um, there's uh, three women of the night, three harlots uh, at work as well. So you have rooms there so you can retire to rooms and wait till evening if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. All right. All righty, all righty, all righty. Well, we will fast forward to that then. And, um... Okay, so um, that evening, you know it's time to come downstairs because the evening entertainment has begun, and um, uh, they have, uh, and you hear uh, the silken voice of Hestephanus um, calling out, and she says, friends, tonight we have the legendary Ursa the Dancing Bear accompanied by her animal trainer and vocalist on tambourine. And so you guys make your way down the steps and there's there's literally, there's a brown bear there with uh, a collar with jangled bells on it and um, a, uh, a, a, a gruff looking um, animal trainer who's got him on a leash and has a rich baritone voice. And he begins to sing the tales of Ursa's conquests of the forests and people are banging their plates and laughing and singing along. Okay. Um, the, uh, the number of patrons has grown at this point. Um, there's actually now about 23 patrons in here. Um, you see Hesta, obviously, and you also see um, someone who looks from, who looks uh, similar to Hesta. Um, he, ha he has pointed ears. He's kind of indeterminate age. Um, he has unkempt black hair and kind of like a scruffy half beard, like he can't quite grow a beard, and he's manning the bar. But the family resemblance between him and Hesta is evident. Okay. Well, I think we should have Skandara try to get us uh, an introduction. We like tell this, tell the story, you know, just have a good time and try to get an introduction to the brother. Okay. Yeah, so we, can approach Estefanus and you know yeah. tell maybe some stories of her adventures on the high seas, and then weed in you know beginning a little bit of the Great Brotherhood okay. shenanigans, maybe with hints that there has been occasional smuggling, but not ever outright saying it. <laughs> All right, so I need to do a little funny roll here. <laughs> Hey, we paid all our fees last time. Um, okay, so Skandara and Hesta start to have this wonderful conversation, and Skandara does not wave you over or anything. She's just looking absolutely entranced um, oh, no. by Hesta. 
and uh, and Hesta, you know, puts her arm on her shoulder, and then and uh, she smiles, and she um, and uh, she escorts her up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. You're not sure. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll try another night. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, goes up to see what they're up to. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> he's look he's looking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's gonna. Um, he wants to go up the stairs. See what's up. Well, I don't think he'd go off right in the middle of the common room. So no, okay. Yeah. We don't want to call attention to ourselves too much. All right. All right. Okay. So um, then, uh, yeah, you guys have been upstairs many times because, of course, there's um, you know. Yeah, we spent a few weeks up there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know that there's... We also met with another one of the members, I think, at the Mink. I think the guy that tried to sell us the stuff. We had a good we had a good direction with him the, one of the previous times. Yeah, our Golian Brotherhood guy. Um, yeah. I forget his name. I can find it probably somewhere. Oh... I think it's on the uh, Google Sheets under. Oh, that's right. It's in the Google Sheets. She's known. Bellos. Bellos. Yeah. Yeah. And he says he's, yeah. he's in the make most evenings, so he might be there. All right. So um, you uh, look around for Bellos, and uh, you do see him. He's uh, sitting at the bar chatting with the scruffy haired guy. Okay, when the when the opportunity presents for an opening, Cassinus is going to go up and, and talk with him, try to get him and engage him in conversation, dinner, drinks, etc. Okay, all right. So you come up. He uh, he remembers you. You guys had very positive reactions with him, and um, and he says, uh, "Ah, Cassinus, have you met Arn Faunus? He's the manager of the Mink. He assists uh, Lieber Faunus in running the business enterprises." Oh, okay. We'll talk with him. Talk with him too. Aren't uh, Aren't eyes you skeptically? Give me a reaction roll. You can have a plus one bonus from the friendly introduction. And then, what's your charisma? It's. it's... Plus two. Okay, so that brings you up to a twelve. That's a great. Um, that's a great response. Great result. So, um, so uh, Aaron says, oh, you know, I think I've heard of your group. The um, what is it? Is it the not the Imperial Vanguard? Oh, it's <laughs> is it the Great Brothers? Good. Is that right? Yes, it is the Great yeah. Brotherhood. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've heard. I've heard some accounting of your doings. Apparently, you were uh, resolving troubles up on the the border forts or some such. We have, yes, we have. Mm. What brings you to Cipheron? And and this and so I I lean in so I lean in to talk you know in a more hushed tone to both Bellos and the other, and I said, we are, uh, we've come to Cipheron. For, um, to find, to solve a mystery in the sewers. We've heard of rats. We've heard of rat men, perhaps. We've come to solve it. So Aaron and Bellos kind of look at each other and, um, and Bellos says, I happen to know a number of men that work in the sewers uh, they haven't reported any problems that i know of uh, this whole rat infestation is just a, a 
of folklore from the days of the night captain and his battle with the uh, were rats. So it's just an old wives' tale. Aranth, uh, and Aranth nods and he says, yeah, there's really little need to uh, head down into the sewers under the, un uh, uh, on the uh, old city. So then, so then I say, I, I appreciate the, the caution. Who might, um, if we were to continue with our endeavor, we would want to be very respectful of, of others in there and not to cross and only to cross paths with our adversary. They uh, uh, they kind of look at each other and um, so let's see here. Okay. We come on a quest, we are not interlopers. <clears throat> so, um, Bellos, uh, 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 Bellos nods at, at Aaron Thonis, and Aaron Thonis uh, takes a few steps away, so he has plausible deniability. And um, and Bellos says, it, "It happens that I know some connected people in the Argolian family, which you know they run the old city. Really, they um, they've been known to." traffic in the sewers the uh what you have to understand is that everything in the old city sewers belongs to the argolian family so if you were to find something down there of interest they'd expect to be able to wet their beaks how could we how that is how could we communicate our benign intentions to them Oh, I can I can pass on any message you'd need me to pass on. Tell them tell them of our tell them of our activities. Should I tell them that if you find anything interesting, they can uh, expect to wet their beaks? What what sort what um what would they what would they look what would they be looking for? It really depends on what it is. The head of the family takes a certain interest in ancient antiquities, and uh, he's struggling against some newcomers in one of the other districts right now. So, you know, coin items of interest. I'm sure you get the drift as an adventurer. Yes. Yes. It's very well. Good, good. And if you spot any warehouse traffic in the sewers, you'll know to look the other way, of course. Of course. Very Anything, good. what else would you suggest that we be wary of, cognizant? Um... Well, I'd be he says, um, I'd say you have to pick a side if you intend to stay in this city. There's uh the sand and bones in the festival district, the Argolian family in the old district, and only one syndicate's gonna be able to run this town. So if you're thinking about befriending sand and bones, I wouldn't show your face in the sewers. Okay, good advice. Good 
Thanks. Yes, please, uh, please pass on our message. I will, I will, excuse me. And at that point, Arnth comes back with drinks for you guys and he says, on the house. <laughs> mm, In the background, the bear is still dancing. The tambourines are flying. Yeah. Hesta and Skandara come down um, and uh, uh, Skandara comes over and smiles at you guys. Hesta waves and um, goes over to talk to the bear trainer. <laughs> Anybody else got any other activities for the mink tonight? No, I, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else that we need to no, do not, not at that you all. Have to I, share. Mean, <laughs> I mean, recover. I mean, I think probably with spells, we can recover the, the injuries even tonight and go down yeah. the next day rather than waiting more than I think one so. day. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I might suggest that we might have a conversation with the bear trainer afterwards. Um, might, you know, uh, an animal trainer with a trained bear might be a peril for our eye. Okay. Why don't, uh, why don't, why don't you take that one? Here, Dwight. Okay. So I'll wait. Maybe take the cabinets with you. <laughs> I'll wait until the bear trainer is done. You know that the, the performance is done, uh -huh. and offer the uh, bear trainer a uh, beer to, uh, and say, "You've got a, You had an amazing performance. Are you interested in any sort of adventuring work?" Uh, all right. Go ahead and give me a reaction roll. Okay, that's two d six. Mm. He says, well, truth of the matter is I've got a bum knee and a broken hip, so I don't think I'm going to be doing much adventuring. And uh, Ursa here isn't quite trained for combat, but if you need a singing and dancing routine, certainly she's available. Now, if you have some other animals that you need to be trained, I could I can train them. I can do mm. dogs, horses, bears, uh, wolves, lions. We might be taking you up on training uh, our dogs. We we do have a uh, uh, more or less a pack of, of war and hunting dogs that we might need a little bit of uh, additional training on. So that that might. Your services might come in handy. Um, can we generally find you here in Cifaron? Oh, you know, I actually, I roam a lot from city to city. The uh, You can only do the bear show a few times and then people get tired. You know how it is. I, I, I do. But uh, you can uh, you can always leave word for me with, uh, with Hesta. She knows how to get in touch with me. Fair enough. Uh, and oh, by the way, I, I, I'm sorry I was rude. Would the bear like a beer as well? Uh, as well? <laughs> and um, the bear, the bear at that point goes Rawr, and lifts its its lips, and um, and he says, "No, she's on a diet." And he says, <laughs> turns around, and smacks her, and he says, "You fatty." <laughs> and the bear's ears kind of go back, and it looks sad. And, Sorry, Bear. I, I I would hook you up, but your your trainer says no. <laughs> What's the bear trainer's name? Demetrios. Demetrios of Chrysaea. And uh, I'll go ahead and buy him one more round, it, it, just as a thank you for his his time, and uh, hope to do business <laughs> with you soon. All right. So you go to buy him, and he's like, oh, "Make it a honey mead." <laughs> you got it. Here. Oh my goodness. It's like, all right, that's all you get. Yeah, and he starts drinking it. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, tomorrow back in the sewers. Yep. Did you want to restart oh, the location yeah. where you left or? Um, so I, I think one thing can we, I think we hold a, 
hold a gray brotherhood meeting and um, I, you know, kind of lay out what happened the night before and say, um, I, I think that we're in the position where we are, we've kind of picked sides <laughs> in, uh, w- in whatever is going on. I think we are well positioned with one. We've, we have no idea who the other side is, but we've had some remarkable, um, reactions. And so I, I pose it to the brotherhood. It's like, well, um, I think we've picked sides in the, in the, in the syndicate, syndicate skirmish thoughts. In memory of Gwynfor, I'm, I'm with the Argolians. <laughs> is, uh, is Newton with us? Yeah. I think he's, yeah. I, uh, I, yeah. I made it. Hey Newton. So just to quickly fill you in, uh, the group found a secret door uh, down in the sewers, um, but the secret door just uh, led into a closet. They searched the closet a little bit, didn't find anything interesting, and so they um, went back upstairs. On the way, they passed a big refuse pile with some coins in it that turned out to be filled with murder maggots. Um, so they had to kill the murder maggots, which almost went really badly because they missed when they threw the burning oil. Um, and uh, then the group came up out of the sewers all covered in goo and slime, so they went to the baths. While they were at the baths, they met Hesta Faunus, the sister of Liber Faunus, uh, and they met uh, Blade Dancer Valara of the Temple District and Lady Adara Dracomir, the daughter of Counselor Dracomir. Um, they were, um, uh, you know, they were having a, a private discussion. The group introduced themselves. Um, Skandara seems to have become friends with Hesta. They went upstairs, not sure what, what, uh, what happened there. Um, and, uh, Hesta invited you guys to meet, uh, at the Mink. You guys went to the Mink and, um, you met Aaron Faunus, uh, the younger brother, Lieber Faunus, the owner of the Mink. And, uh, you also met Bellis, who is, a uh, apparently quote, connected to the Argolian Brotherhood, and he cautioned you to make sure that the Argolian Brotherhood gets to wet its beak on any treasure you discover in the under, in the, um, uh, in the sewers. So anyways, I think we're on, we're on their side. The, the ladies were very successful at the, uh, yes, um, at the paths. The <laughs> what, 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 what's talk about the sides? What, what's talk about sides? What's that all about? Oh, it's the, yeah. um, the Argolian Brotherhood versus the Sand and Bones in the Festival District, and he said he said we have to pick sides. Who, who said? Bellos. Bellos. Bellos, a member of the Argolian Brotherhood, said that if you're intending to be traipsing around the old district, you need to pick you need to pick sides. And so, just now when you logged or hopped on, Sean was pulling a what's a company meeting, and Sean was suggesting that we side with the Argolians. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, and I was I was agreeing. <laughs> oh, so okay, so we're into me now. Yeah. yeah. Thieves, can you trust them? <laughs> no <laughs> offense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we'll advance the clock to tomorrow. Uh, well, so as part of the now. meeting, also, I'm, well, maybe I can just suggest. I mean, because I, I have one thought of how to proceed tomorrow. Um, we could go back to where we left off and continue exploring that way. Or there was that blocked off area which looked ratnod. Remember that? It was um, mm-hmm. there were some timbers and some furniture thrown up against it, and some I think some tuff. And we de- um, we determined. I'm gonna close the. It's in my, yeah, my it, was map blo- it was a blocked off blocked off uh, area. Yeah. Yeah, it was estimated three hours of work with with tools, and we could clear it out. So potentially, we could go back and explore that because we did see signs of rats there. Or potentially, we could go and continue on from where we left off with mm-hmm. the um, with the maggots. Yeah, we talked a little bit about hiring a uh, work party or something, some workers to clear that out, like some manual laborers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that might be better than us doing it ourselves. Yeah. I'm looking at my ropey, skinny arms. You want to pay them hazardous duty pay. You can easily hire some, some, uh, some workers there, you know, skilled, skilled construction labor would be two silver pieces a day. So, um, no problem. Yeah. We could easily pay for that with what we got in the, um, you know, the, um, out of the maggot pile. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it sounds like if we find any more maggots, we need to supply a, a tie the, several of the maggots to the Argolians. <laughs> yes. You don't. You don't want to disrupt the flourishing maggot economy. Maybe we should just pay them all in maggots. Just save all the maggots for them. That sounds like a good idea. So my suggestion is a good thing Willie didn't play the venturer. Right. <laughs> so what know your skills, right? Brothers, one thing. A little passive aggressiveness. <laughs> now, now, brothers, one thing. If we do plan on taking uh, laborers down there to dig a hole, I recommend that we blindfold them until we reach the spot where they are to dig. So that way they're they not are, encouraged. It is very unlikely they will agree to that. <laughs> Unless we give them a lot of, you know, some extra kicker pay. I say we double their pay, make it four silvers a day, and you know, hazardous duty and inconvenience pay <laughs> along with well, the labor afterwards. I, I, I would say, I would say, probably, ah, I, I would wisdom. know, with, this is not cyberpunk, all right? <laughs> No, I'd probably say let's 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 make it a gold piece a day in order to make sure that you know. Okay, but I don't. This is just work. It's basically a gold piece a piece, and yeah. How many labors would it take? Five, six. I think, I think it said five. Uh, five can get it done in a day. Ten can get it done in half a day. Okay, ten. Okay, well, it's no problem to find um, to find the, the the workers. Um, you know, you can go into you go into the emporium, and um, the next morning when it opens around, uh, you know, just a bit after dawn, and you know, there's various areas where workers congregate looking for uh, labor gigs for the day, sort of like by the Home Depots and things, and. <laughs> um, Uh, give me a reaction roll to see how you're, you're, we're going to pay you so much and all you have to go down is into the fabled sewers of the undercity of Sifron, which are totally not haunted and filled with thieves and criminals. Okay. This is just a, this is just a straight up 2d6 with none of my modifiers in it. Okay. So you got a six and then your modifier is eight and then you've got diplomacy nine, bargaining 10. Um, and five times wages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and five times wages. All right, all right. So um, you're able to get, you're able to get. Uh, uh, let's see. Let me actually roll. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, when it comes down to it, there's over two dozen guys are willing to do it of um, of the available workers. So it's no problem. It's a lot of money. That you you pick your ten. Where do you intend to descend down into the sewers? Why don't we, should we go back in the same way we came? I think that was pretty close to where it was, wasn't it? Yep. Um, I'll look. I'll look at yeah. the map again. Um, yeah, I, I, we didn't designate all the all the grates that we saw, I and mean, we don't actually know where they are because we didn't poke our heads up either. Um, right. There was one large grate we passed, which is about the same distance, but I'm not sure if we know where that large grate is, which would be south west of the rotted timbers but probably just because otherwise we're and unless i can use my explorer skills and try to try to extrapolate from map making and that kind of thing where it probably would be uh um, if you had caving proficiency you could mapping you know you map and i i make sure your map is accurate but um okay. caving proficiency is what lets you remember exact navigation underground okay 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 in that case yeah i just say let's let's just go in the original grate yep so the one all the way up here all the way at the river yeah okay all right give me a sec guys are we taking our dogs with us this time or are we leaving them behind um yeah let's take like we talked about we can take zelicus and how are you going to get the dogs down in the sewers like you're going to carry them down the ladder and then put them in the filth yeah, that was my one quandary was the filth part. <laughs> well, dogs will drink any kind of water, so you're going to consider they're going to get sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's leave them behind. Yeah, leave them behind. We, we have ISK, because I know that scavenous takes ISK. 
<laughs> yes, yes, but ISK has been specifically trained for these important uh, important things. Yeah, ISK will protect us. Okay. All right. So let me uh, configure this. So, did we learn better tactics to not run into another one of those impossible to kill monsters? <laughs> the giant slimes that are acidus. I think it's watch for wet secret doors, and it sounds like they don't attack unless you're pretty close. So, um, okay. So I think I remember where you guys came in. So I'm 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 putting you where I think you are. Okay. I threw a rough map up on Discord if that helps at all. Let me take a look. Um, it's you have to scroll up past Grant and. <laughs> At least comedy routine. <laughs> I can't find the stupid uh, server. Oh, there it is. Um, where is it? In-game discussion? Yeah, in-game discussion. It's about five, you know, if you, about five or six. Um, um, you got to scroll up above the memes that I posted, and then you'll find it is a uh, map. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see next, it. next time Castanus throws burning oil, I'm going to say, let me show you something. Castanus, you see, does has a history of uh, difficulty with accuracy on ranged things. Yeah. All right. Yep, I know where you guys are. Okay, so uh, we will activate the scene. Boom. You descend down into the sewers, and um, you are about halfway down um, when a patrol skiff uh, filled with town watch um, pulls up and says, You there! What are you doing? (laughs) Well met. Watch. We're headed into the sewers today. Doing some cleaning, looking for to clean out to clean out both the dirt and the refuse. Um, they say All right, you don't look like gong farmers. We're not. We're not. We're concerned citizens. <laughs> what are you concerned about? <laughs> we've heard we've heard right. tales. Of- <laughs> Tales of rats, vermin, filth in the sewers. One of the guards join us? says, I bet they're part of the Argolian Brotherhood and they're smugglers. Yeah. Give me a, a reaction roll there, Castanus. This is straight up with. Yeah, it's no. eight, nine. Okay. So, um. <laughs> He says, ah, they, they might be our Golian brother. And he turns over and he says, we're just going to need you to pay the uh, the uh, five gold piece construction fee. <laughs> Done. All right, well, uh, good luck. Be careful down there. A lot of disease. They uh, pocket the coin and skiff on their way. You know, one thing I think we should do, actually, I don't think we should do that, but I think it'd be hilarious, is we should set one of ourselves up as the um, the Night Watchman Reborn. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Remember the, the legend yeah. of the Night Watchman who got rid of it last time? Mm-hmm. Yep. That, might be a, that might be an interesting tactic at some point, but something to keep I in am, mind. I am he. Reborn! <clears throat> okay. Yep. All right, well, you guys are down into the sewers. Um, as you remember, sludge runs through the sewer pipes. Um, you charge or run at half move, minus two penalty to acrobatics and stealth. It's filled with disease-carrying fecal matter. So if you were knocked down or otherwise fall prone in it, you risk fungal infections. It carries a powerful miasma with the smell of rotten eggs that imposes 
um, headaches, bleary eyes, and shortness of breath. When I when I think of the great epics of heroes of old, this is exactly what I remember. Hmm. You remember very different things than me. <laughs> so um, the uh, you guys uh, are now all down there with your blindfolded and very very nervous, um, very very nervous construction workers. Uh, the tunnel is 13.5 feet tall, 13.5 feet wide, has a two foot wide ledge running along either side and sludge in the middle. Um, with the construction workers blindfolded, they're going to have a very difficult time um, walking on the slick pathways without falling off of them. So uh, do you wish to have their sandaled tread within the sludge or would you rather that they uh, move at an incredibly painstakingly slow pace on the um, ledges. Can we have it so that one of each of us is like walking alongside, you know, one of each, we're walking in the muck and we're kind of like right next to them, keeping them up on the ledge? And yeah, if you guys want to, but they're and still gonna move pretty... really slow. I mean, cl you know, close your eyes and, yeah. and walk on, uh, and then, you know, walk on wet uh, stone, like, Oh, understand. If, if we just have them blindfolded for the entrance part, maybe we can take off their blindfolds, you know, somewhere into the into the tunnel and move normally. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that, that, that's actually that's actually fair. Yeah, like if they don't know where we came in, they don't exactly yeah. know where we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay, so move in some distance and then take it off. Yep. All right. Are you guys now? This is an area you've been through before. Are you moving at exploration speed or are you moving at combat speed? I think we should exploration. Always, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the slower one, right? That's the slower yeah. one. Yeah, it's very yeah. slow. My, I mean, my recommendation would be combat speed because we know where we're going. At least you know we have a we have a destination in mind, and it you know. Okay. By the way, I, I grocery shop at combat speed, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what are you doing, combat speed or not? I mean, I'll leave it to, uh, to cast this. Right, we, we got plenty of time. Let's go at exploration speed. Who knows what's okay, – it's, it's going to be something different every time. Okay. All right, so um, at about 8.15, you guys get to this point here. Um, you remember from your map that Jonathan drew, there was a corridor down to the south that you had not explored. I assume you're not going to go explore it. Correct. Not with okay. laborers. Nope. So, all right. I'm just curious, should we be seeing anything besides just a tiny notch? Uh, you shouldn't be seeing very much at all. Yeah, just like a little tiny little sliver of, of white. Yeah. Are there any greats near here? Um, yeah, there are. There's a great, there's a great, a small grate at this intersection here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and uh, a few more feet here. And... That's deep, by the way, a small grate, kind of profound. Okay, actually. so um, you, uh, as you come around towards that, um, that area where you saw the rats, you actually see there's, um, there's eight filth-covered men and women with um, stringy hair and dirty garments, um, don't have any torches, and they look very surprised to see. They're just want. They're just in the dark. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Halt and say, "Who goes there? Identify yourself." 
So um, they, uh, you know, they kind of look at each other and they look at you somewhat, um, uh, somewhat furtively. And um, give me a reaction roll. So. What did we get here? Oh, a seven plus his charisma nine, diplomacy ten. Are you doing diplomacy or intimidation? Diplomacy. I don't have intimidation yet. Right. Well, <laughs> you can still attempt intimidation even without the proficiency. It's just, <laughs> just modifies your modifiers a little bit. Okay. Yeah, diplomacy. All right. So. Diplom. <laughs> Diplomacy is the art of diploming. <laughs> I'm really slow, Newton. I finally got the, the small, great joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Okay. So um, they, uh, they seem um, uh, they seem somewhat uneasy. Um, and uh, one of them steps forward. He's a little larger um, than the others and uh, well muscled. And um, he uh, he says, well, "What do you mean? What are we doing here? What are you doing here?" We have we have business here. What is yours? Well, we have business here as well. We are the Gray Brotherhood. Identify yourself. And uh, he says, well, we don't take orders from no Gray Brothers and Sisters. Do we, boys? Are you the Imperial Vanguard? <laughs> no, a man steps a little closer into your torchlight, and you can see that he's from Ulrich. He has uh, dark skin, um, has uh, scars. It looks like perhaps he was once a gladiator. And he says, I'm Abimbola. These are my men. Now get out of here. This is our turf. Hmm. I'm going to cast Slumber on them. You're going to start casting? That's going to yeah. turn well, initiative. Well, I feel like we're, we're building up to something. Yeah, you don't think it. I would have been able to... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. To do that in the background while they're negotiating? Not unless you have five magic proficiency. <laughs> Not, yeah, no magic is loud and like. Uh, so you don't you want to do it or no? It just it's going to just send us into a, 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 a initiative. No, I guess I'm going to wait and see how how this turns out then. Okay. We may, may end up in initiative anyway. <laughs> yes, yes, we might. Uh, okay. okay. Um, I said, I, it, what, what did he say his name was? I can't remember his name. He said it was Abimbola. Then step aside, Abimbola, and let us pass. Um, they say, uh, you're welcome to pass. Keep on going. Are, are, is, is there what? enough? Is there enough area? We're right next to the um, the block, aren't we? You are. You're right next to the area you want to be. Oh, there. oh! They're blocking. They're yep. blocking us. Mm -hmm. They're they they were. You came around the corner, and they were standing right near the construction. Okay. Well, why don't we why don't we pass them by and circle back? Okay. See where they that's go. Good. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. We'll 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 pass we'll pass by and continue on our way and give them plenty of space and then circle back. Okay. So you uh, continue on your way then another little distance here, heading down south. Okay. So uh, you know the light of your torches uh, slowly. Uh, uh, they fall into shadow. They kind of watch you glaring as you depart. 
what do we what do we see on them as we pass pass by? Um, they're wearing tattered uh, tattered um, tunics and robes. Um, they have uh, some daggers, a couple quarter staffs. Um, the uh, the large one, Abin Bola, was carrying a sword. But they're 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 pretty they're pretty rough looking. Yeah, they're pretty rough looking. They look they look kind of like homeless people who live in the sewers. Do they have torches mm. or anything? Or no, they didn't have any torches. Are they extra hairy? <laughs> extra hairy. Um, <laughs> like they're, no, they're, I mean, they're they're suffering from Cosmos's blessing. <laughs> they um. No, no, they 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 actually look kind of um. Like kind of uh, uh, sort of scrawny and, and and sort of you know weaselly almost not uh, not so much hairy, uh, just like you know people that live in filth and don't have good nutrition. Hmm. So they didn't look like they're evolved. They're evolving to animals or something to adapt it to living down here in the darkness. It just seems odd. It does. Well, I'm thinking where rats personally, but are you guys yeah. stopping at this point with them just in the shadows or and standing there? Cause they can still see you obviously if they're back here. No, we'll, we'll continue around the corner and why don't we yeah. have, um, have, um, Oh, how far we, we could have one of our thieves or a couple of our thieves linger back, but I'm a little bit afraid of that too. We're going to need to make sure the rear guard is on their toes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe and, we pass around the corner and, and just linger there for yep. 10 minutes. Yeah. For around. Okay. So you linger there for 10 minutes or so? Okay. And then right. if I remember right from looking at Aria, Aria has um, oh. uh, hiding and has a spell for Chameleon that would, and another one for Silent Step, allowing them to, uh, you know, if she wanted to sneak back over there. I imagine yes. that she could. Yes. Oh, that'd be cool. So Newton has vanished. Tereno can move uh, silently. Yeah, are, are those are there, are are Aria's spells still active in are those also in Axe too? I'm not sure. What I'm sorry? Chameleon and the Chameleon and, and Silent Step. Step? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I mean, yeah, Skandara and um, Toothy can hide, but they're pretty low level, so they fail hiding a lot. I think. Right. <laughs> so, um, so my Arya might be the best choice to to lead any return. Yep. Right. The Night Blade use her spell and then sneak back. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. That would be really cool. Well, it's Newton's character, right? Mm -hmm. Nightblade? I think so. Yeah. Yep. What? Uh, what do you think, Newton? Uh, which character? Arya. Arya. Oh, Arya. Who's Arya? <laughs> you missed the last session, Newton, so you were able to recruit an elven Nightblade. No, he was there, but it's just been a while. Uh, <laughs> it's no, 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 yeah, wait a minute. hot minute. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought I had, I thought I had Ziadana. You do have you Ziadana. Did. What happened? Remember, Sean tried to recruit Arya and oh. failed, and then you stepped in and succeeded. It's coming back to me now. So she's got skulking. Um, the fact so that you cool. got a snack makes me need a snack. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at her spells, she's got Chameleon and Silent Step as well. Yep. Yep, I see it now. Yep. Yeah, so that's what we were thinking so of because you, I mean, our our thieves and assassins can can try to hide, but they're really low level, so they fail a lot. So I'm a little bit worried about yeah, seeing one of them sure. back against eight. Whereas with Chameleon, the silent silent step, maybe yep. Arya is our best choice. Yeah. Yep. She'll she'll go ahead and do that. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I and within those ten, and within 
And within the ten minutes, yeah, within the ten. So before the ten, before the ten minutes expire, she'll go and do that. Yep. I think everybody's taking a break. All right. What'd you guys decide? Well, everybody else left. Okay. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody decided. Oh, let's just take a break real quick. So. Mm. And uh, I think pretty much the decision is Ari is going to sneak her way in there and uh, using chameleon and silent step. That is to, correct. Uh, mask movements. That's okay. correct. And uh, and do it within. So within the because um, we're going to go around the corner for about 10 minutes. So about two minutes into the 10 minutes, you'll do that. OK, well, we'll wait till everybody gets back and then we'll handle that. Yeah. All right, hold on. Does let me see abilities. Let me see what. Oh, yep. And Arya has quiet magic. Oh, nice. Yep. Which would make sense because I mean she is an assassin or a oh, nightblade. So, right. Yeah. yeah. It would be. It would be really bad if uh, the assassin had to. Be loud when casting or stealth spells. Oh yeah, it's a class skill at second level. Cool. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so the Nightblade cast Chameleon on herself, and um, yep. she, um, and and Silent Step and Silent Step. Okay, so she casts both. Hold, hold on. Well, hold, wait Let's a minute. Win for Sean, she only cast one spell or two. She's fourth level. Hold on, let me let me open. Uh, if she's fourth level, she should be able to cast two spells. Okay. She'll yeah, then she'll cast both. Yeah. And then she's okay. going to Raymond doesn't have quiet magic. Raymond has loud magic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Raymond has thunderous voice magic. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Hey guys. All the better to preach. And spread. I still think we should hire a marching band to go through these sewers. Just <laughs> that would be hilarious. Get Ursa the dancing bear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so I'll just move this token. Uh, but obviously, this just represents Aria. So I'm actually going to need a morale check from Aria because she is moving off alone in front of the whole rest of the party. Um, you know, kind of taking all the risk. So, um, yeah, that's fair. Let's see how she feels about this. I could so, send the hawk with her. What do we know about infravision? How do we, do we have an idea of how long, how far infravision stretches or do, is it constant or does it vary? It varies by creature, usually between 30 feet and 90 feet. Okay. And it's not infravision, it's lightless vision. Oh, right, right, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So it's not it's not like thermographics. Right, yes. So the the, the distance of the tunnel I think from the the blockage is about 190 feet. So um potentially we could also have Skandara and Toothy follow at, you know, 90 feet behind her, you know, sure. roughly. Sure. Um, so she's not entirely alone, and then maybe have <laughs> and Drapus and um, um, Scavidus maybe fall a little bit further back than that. Yeah, um, because we we can still hide, but we're not sneaky. Well, I mean, we're sort of sneaky, but not as much. Right, and they're all using shadowy senses to move without uh, torchlight. Yes. Well, we we can. Right. I mean, yeah. So I guess I guess I couldn't. So I guess that's the that's the limiter. Uh, maybe Andravis and Scavenus can stand kind of at the corner, ready okay. to yeah. shoot around or something. So, All right. So they're at the corner. Yeah, so so, so Aria is advancing by herself. All right. Yep. So give me so, a morale yeah, so check for she... Aria, please. Two dice six. Mm, yep. And any bonuses? Um, let's see. Ireland, let's see. Management of morale score, code of mercenary. Uh, plus one bonus. Plus one, okay.
Mm. Okay. So she takes a step forward and says, you know, this is absolute nonsense that you're expecting me to go forward down a dark tunnel uh, when there's a group of eight people up there who can clearly see in the dark. That's fair. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Plan B. Okay. March back and the way. I mean, just form up and march and back. She she says she says I, uh, uh, I mean, I'll do it if you absolutely insist. But I'm going to have to rethink my commitment to the Gray Brotherhood after that. Well, you're the one who. Well, actually, I won't say anything because I have thunder. So some, somebody somebody else talked to her. Yeah, so, I, I mean, yeah, I, I shouldn't say anything because I will light up this place. Yes, you will. <laughs> well, uh, every time I speak, <laughs> everyone. Will... Tablet. Write it down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say if, if she doesn't want to do it, that's fair. I mean, I. I yeah. I, I yeah. respect that, and so I say, let's just form up and and do it uh, old school. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. let, let's yep. do it Gray Brotherhood style, kicking in the door. Yep. <laughs> let, let, let's circle happen. back. Let, let's circle back within those ten minutes. Let's go. Yep. Okay. So for now, Standard we're going to proceed with the, uh, forward, and with then the we're builders, do... with the construction workers in the middle. <laughs> yep, construction workers in the middle. And we're marching down the middle of the sewer, right? Are we doing March Plan B? Sure. Is that Are we like a good one? forming some kind of like flying wedge and rail. engaging them? Are we cha- changing cool. direction or are we still moving away? No, no they wanted back to go back now. They wanted to double okay. back. Yeah. So going back so, is a block. Yeah. So my thought is we, we use the alternate plan where the most of the party is in the sledge. Okay. Um, and because that, if we get into combat, we don't want to be falling face first into that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 and I, I, I would, I would I go ahead that. and pull yep. Skandara and um, Toothy um, yes. to the rear, leaving Raymond and and Hay Black uh, as the vanguard. Right. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so um, you were in the you were standing in the sewers. There is the uh, the construction pile here that you can see um, that needs to be excavated. This is the sewer tunnel that you are in. It's about thirteen feet wide, as I mentioned, and it turns to the left up ahead. Um, when you get to back to that spot, there is no sign of the uh, of the furtive looking men. I have tracking, so as we approach, I'm going to you know halt the make the party let the party delay and let me you know before they start mucking everything about try doing some tracking to see if we can tell if they went through. If they went through through the barrier. The, the, the barrier is the barrier is clearly impassable to you. Well, if there are rats or something. Uh, okay, so you want to see if rats recently went through the barrier or. Oh, it's, it's, let, let's talk about this. If I, can, I would like to see if there's any sign of their, if, of any sign of recent movement northeast of the barrier. Um, so can I, you know, can I tell if they went this way or does do their paths does their path stop? Kind of a thing. Oops. Of course, we've been treading all over that ourselves, so I'm not sure see, how, how easy that would be. <laughs> do you see smaller? Are there paths? Are there holes through this for a smaller creature that could get through? Yes, yes. A small, a small creature like a, uh, you know, even a, even a large rat could get through. Yeah. Um. So, uh, give me a tracking check, Jonathan. Is that public? Uh, yeah, you can make it. Yeah, public. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, you see traces of, of um, 
muddy footprints that uh, are in this area here um, where you saw the men kind of loitering around. Um, and they, uh, they come out of the water, the muck. Um, they come up to this area. Um, you also see muddy footprints that lead back into the muck. Um, and you see a um, and you see a number of footprints of of what look to be uh, rats as well. Uh, <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> All right. Yep. So I think we need to have, as our laborers work, I think we need to have a triple guard. We need to have be guarding our, you know, yep. the northeast to the southwest, and also. Plenty of in guards the, at the barrier itself. Yeah, in the project itself. Probably the spear guys, those with spears, which can include myself because I have a spear, stand behind the laborers so we can stab over them <laughs> should anything come through. <laughs> and then maybe those without spears guard yeah. the, uh, the other approaches. Okay. And, you know, Skandara and um, Toothy and Arya can guard the other approaches. Okay. Um, let's put Raymond and um, uh, Higlack up here, and then we'll put Horaeus and Bombor here. All right. Oh, I'll put Skandara up. She's up ahead in the shadows to the northeast. Or right, peek right around the corner. So we, could give, the corner. we could give Skandara a lantern if we wanted to and just set it on the floor. Oh, she has um, um, oh, the night vision thing. Okay. So she would want to hang out in the darkness. All right, so go ahead and position yourselves if you guys would like. And I would suggest putting some uh, archers here that can cover all three directions. Yeah. So that's, for instance, there's where Scavenus is going to go. He has precise shooting, so he can shoot all three directions. Nice. We'll step back also. So I can yeah. I can rush forward with a spear or keep my and bow. Jarvis, yeah, you should probably be next to him. Where's the boundary that they'll be digging at? Is it all the way in the far corner? Like down in that area, right? Yeah, yeah. I would say probably. Yeah. You can kind of move forward into it, and you'll see where that you'll see where that becomes impassable. So I think Terranius, I think you should go. I think Terranius, Scavenus, and Andravus should all be in that area next to each other, where they can kind of fling stuff in all three directions if need be. Yep. Wait, say that again. Please. So like yeah, so like move. I'll, I'll move you like here. See that okay. way. Yeah, if you need to, if we need to shoot down, or to the left or to the right, all those guys can do it. Should we move Tooth Toothy and Arya down to the southeast, guarding that approach? Um, let's see. So we've got Bomber and Horaeus. I mean, they could. They could. They have dark vision. Well, if, so they can if we're gonna down. if we're gonna encounter were rats, one thing to think about is Horaeus and Raymond are immune to the disease. Mm. So we want the spearmen close to the barrier, right? So we can spear anything that comes through. So do we have Avro and Agalor in a good spot there? And Griffin can move up too. He's got yeah, a spear. I think so. And Skandara can as well. I'm sorry, yeah. Zeodana. Is, is Zeodana immune or does do um, no. Blade Dancers immune? I, I do not believe they are. But I don't know if she can be somewhat close. I think it's just the Cleric and the Paladin. Paladin is definitely immune. I am resistant. Okay. You have Divine... What, what, what's your proficiency, Newton? Divine Blessing. Divine Blessing, not Divine Health, yeah. So you're not immune, but you're resistant, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we should have Horaeus up with the workers. He's got a magic. He's got a magic weapon, and he's immune too, isn't he? Not a bad idea. And then yeah. uh, let's 
let's take somebody, uh, put somebody ad- uh, down there where to fill in his spot so that we can cover that flank. Is they O'Donnell okay. or Griffin? Uh, that's, oh, that's probably a place for Griffin. Yeah. Okay. Switch, exactly. switch Griffin and... Um, Whoops. He just really jumped. <laughs> I think we both, Alex. We got we got Griffin stuck somewhere weird because I think both Sean and I moved him. So yeah, I think we need where, help to get back. He? He's over here. Oh, okay, there you go. We were both moving him. Yeah. So are, are you holding? Is Cassius holding the lantern that the workers are going to work by? Yeah, I'll hold the lantern. Okay. And we should probably have one more. Well, okay, yeah. All right. I think both Agalor and Avro have Wolfsbane on them. So if you don't have a magic weapon, I equipped most other people with uh, a silver dagger or with Wolfsbane. And if you hit in, if you use the Wolfsbane and hit in hand to hand combat, they have to take a uh, lycanthrope takes a saving throw. If they fail, they become like a undead that's just been turned. So they're pretty much useless for the rest of the combat. As, as it, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that's how I see it. Yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys are all all formed up and uh so you remember it's going to take uh you brought 10 guys so um doing two silver pieces a day so it's going to take them several hours to remove all the construction so it's going to be an, a nerve-wracking uh bit of time here Are you guys all right with that i mean so we've got guards choice. they should feel well guarded we're in it yeah, yeah. We're still, i think what he's saying is we're still vulnerable to surprise <laughs> but i don't know that we can do anything about that so <laughs> Right, simply because, like, you know, no one, you can't remain constantly alert for four hours. No one can. Yes, I remember Infantry Week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember, I remember, like, managing to fall asleep in an ambush, like, oh my goodness. and then waking up to the sound of the M60 going off. I was like, oh, I just started, pull, I just pulled the trigger and started shooting at just whatever was there. Like, oh, ah! Oh. So you're saying they won't be standing there with the spears overhead, pointed downward, quivering, ready to spike something for three hours. Yeah, that sounds right. After the first half hour, they start to droop, and they're like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 That caffeine. Exactly. All right. A little sec here, guys. Wait. Back at the original encounter, I, I was I was halfway tempted to say to the guys, "Hey, are you guys worth seventeen experience points?" <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you can level. <laughs> Why? So who, needs, level. who needs seventeen experience points? I do. So you, can, you can level. Really? I level. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. I figured that would break character, so I didn't do that, but it the thought occurred to me. <laughs> I, I don't seem to ever have that problem. Being that close. You're pretty that... close too, aren't you? No. Oh, okay. I thought I thought there was one, maybe one of the so there's Andravis and then one of the henchmen I think is really close. I can't remember who though. It was really close. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so uh, your uh, your workers go to work, and um, time begins to tick past slowly. I think Agalor is misleveled. Why do you say that? Uh, his experience is almost four thousand. He's only he's marked as level two, but he should be. Oh, he's level three. Yeah, he's level. Three. Oh no, maybe I'm I'm misreading it. Never mind, my fault. I'm off by one. I'm close. No, that's right. Yeah, he is level two. Yeah, that's right. He's level two because it's two thousand. Close though. Yes, yeah, so very close. Okay. 
So, um, well, let's see what happens to you guys. It's been about three hours now. You're beginning to really make good headway. And, um, and uh, at that point, there is a skittering sound to the northwest of um, sounds like, uh, you know, a swarm of insects or perhaps some large insects. What do you do? Well, let's call it worker halt for right now. Yeah. For one thing. Okay, worker halt. Um, All right. Skandara will probably back away. She's at the she's at the corner. So can she see anything around right, the corner? So yeah. So Skandara. So looking around the corner, what you see um, are four beetles with huge razor sharp mandibles. Each one of them is about the size of a large dog, and they are trotting through the sewer water. Um, mandibles clasping like this as if they are hungry. All right. She's going to back away to the fall back. All right, so behind Roman back. and Piglack, and she's going to she's going to pull up fall back behind him. If I can. Okay. And let's see, uh, let's see if she's surprised before you do that. Okay. Oh, fuck. Give me a d6 roll. Oh. <clears throat> no, she's not surprised. All right, so she falls back, and we will go ahead and go into initiative. Uh, casting. Casting. Okay. Casting. Okay. And I'll, I'll probably say, you know, workers get behind the shield wall. We kind of want worker, them in the middle the in case the rats all, come to. The wor workers are all here, so you don't, they're nowhere near them. But I'm just saying, probably want to fall back here in case rats come through at the same time <laughs> while we're distracted. Um, okay. I don't know. Uh, I would say that would I'm be just thinking fairly hard to, to do a passage of lines while they're in the middle of doing construction work. Um, okay. But uh, sure, they will, they, will, they will do their best. Okay. I'm just trying to keep them safe. <laughs> All right, Skandara, you're up. Um, she is going to ready for when something comes around the corner. She'll put an arrow in it. All right, Toothy Turino. He is going to um, uh maintain his position to the south. So, um, yeah. yeah. He'll, Aria? So he'll... She's to the Aria. south also. Okay. Tyrannius? I'm holding my spell until they come around the corner so I can target them. Okay. All right. So, um, first beetle is up. He has a... Okay. So he goes 17 feet and then, okay. So he's coming to sight. If anybody was holding and would like to shoot him. Um, does Tarquinius want to let go of his spell first? Go ahead with your spell first. Ah, that's the one, question. It's just one beetle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then Skandar, Skandario is ready. So she, she'll shoot as soon as it comes around the corner. Um, okay. Okay, she hits it. Boom. She does four points. Okay, the arrow thuds into the creature. Um, does not halt its advance. Anybody else coming off hold? Anybody else coming off ready? I'm no. trying to assess the, the radius on the slumber. If I can try to catch more than one in it. Well, you will when they come into sight, yeah. 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 I'm going to hold then. Oh, I, I actually, uh, apologies one sec here, guys. I, um, I had made a uh, small error. I forgot the map scale is a little different. So these guys aren't quite as big as so. some. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're cute now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> must have been the sewer gas. It seemed like they're really enormous for a minute. <laughs> that, that's right. It's a mirage. <laughs> okay. 
Sorry about that. Yeah, so this map, because it's it's a, quite a large map, so the scale has to be, is half scale. So I had to shrink everybody when I put you on here. All right, so the first one is come in. Uh, Andravis, you're up. Oh, actually, I guess the first one will attack uh, since he can. And he will attack with his mandibles on Higlack. And hit AC4. Not enough. Bounces off nope. Higlack's chainmail armor. Okay. Andravis. Um, I am going to, since I know there's three more coming, I'm going to um, ready to shoot the next one that comes around the corner. Easier okay. than shooting in the melee. Oh, so this one is coming in. Okay. All right, I'll shoot it. AC5. All right, you hit it for three points. The arrow thuds into its carapace. Bombor. Bombor is going to hold action with his bow if any of the beetles break through the line. Okay. Castinus? Delay. Okay. All right. Okay, so this beetle's up now. Okay, another beetle coming in. Any any shots? Any shots? All right. Not yeah. le unless uh, Bomborg has a clear shot without um, uh, the uh, precise shooting proficiency. Um, he does when it's back here. Okay, he'll take it. All right. Oh, oh, nice shot, Bombor. Okay. So another wounded giant beetle. They're all softened up. They are definitely softened up. Okay, Agalor is up. Does it continue to advance or does it stop back oh, there? Oh, it does continue to advance. Thank you. And it will attack Higlack. Actually, it will attack Raymond. I think I'm, I'm going to be uh, casting Slumber on it at this point, right in the center of those, to try to catch them. Okay, so you, you, you're going to cast Slumber? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think that is going to nuke them then. So, because it's a uh, 10 foot radius, is that right? Uh, 10 foot diameter? 10 foot diameter, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they're all, they're all in the uh, diameter. And. Uh, targets with, uh, each target with two hit dice or more can make a paralysis save. Okay, so they get to make saving throws. Let's see if they succeed. Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. So one of them succeeds, the other two are asleep. Okay. Ogalore. Nobody for Agalor? Okay, Raymond? Oh, that's me. Sorry. No, Agalor is still over by the wall. Okay, no problem. Raymond? Raymond, uh, Bless goes off. So everyone has everyone within 50 feet radius of the castle, which I think it should be everybody. Okay. Uh, gets, pl gets plus one to attack throws, damage throws, morale rolls, and saving... And saving throws against magical fear. The only person that doesn't get it is Higlack. Because he's already in he's already in melee. Because he is he is in melee right now. Correct. Oh. So everybody except Higlack gets it. Right. Okay. Very good. Uh Zayadana. Zayadana? Okay, Scavenus? I think Nuke yeah, sorry. Zayadana. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I pressed the mute button a little early. Uh, Zayadana will be uh, ready to attack uh, anyone who threatens the, um, the workers. Okay, got it. All right. Um, 
Scavenus is going to sh- Scavenus will shoot into melee in the one that just attacked Higlac. That's still okay. that's still uh, awake. Nice hit. Uh, okay, the uh, the creature is bleeding heavily and looks near death. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. So this one comes rushing forward. Anybody got an action? No. Okay. Attacking Higlack. That ain't gonna hit. No, bounces off his armor. Very sad. Okay, uh, Griffin. Um, he's he's got his spear, and he's gonna he'll only act, react if they break through. Avaro. He's just guarding the uh, workers in the area, so he's gonna he's gonna ready for any kind of attack from some other direction. Got it. All right, Horaeus. Same thing for Horaeus. He's guarding the workers, making sure nothing's coming from the rubble. Okay, Higlack. Higlack is going to take the uh, wounded beetle, I guess the middle one um, that's still awake, and attack it with a sword. All right. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> All right, Higlack misses, bounces off its armored carapace. Okay, we go to another combat round. All right, Agalor is guarding people. Turno is down guarding the south. So I have a bombardier beetle attacking. All right. oh. oh! It's AC9 for six points. Yeah, it's AC8. So yeah, that'll hit. Yeah, so you're down to 14. Okay, mandibles tear into your flesh. It's awesome. All right, um, Andravis. He will uh, shoot the wounded one. Okay. So it's minus four for into yes. um, into melee, but plus one because of Newton's spell. So minus three, I think. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Oh, and it should be plus one damage to that. I didn't. Yeah. So seven points damage. Nice. Okay. So um, you have killed it. You can cleave. All right. Good thing oh, it's not wow. a spear. <laughs> oh, well. Now that's some great brotherhood rolls, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Somehow these guys got. Okay. So, um, Skandara. Oh, let's see. This is nine feet wide. So, can she. Scooch up here and attack it from the rear with their knives. Um, because so these guys are all asleep. They're asleep, but if she moves within five feet of the enemy, she becomes engaged. So you can see that there's no no range. Okay. That. Yeah. Um, in that case, she'll just because um, right. she's not really able to. Actually, I, yeah, no, she can't do it. She can't cross okay. over to the other side of Higlack, and well, then she'd get engaged by this one. But well, these these are both so you can get engaged with sleeping ones. Um, no, but this okay here. Sorry, so this is this one, and so that's his that's his range of engagement. So I guess uh, I guess she could move up like that. Is that what you want to do then? I see what you're well, saying. This is a sleeping. Well, I was right? suggesting, what if she just goes this? directly behind Higlack? The oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Those. Yeah, problem. You're right. You're right, Jonathan. Sorry, the token's not being on the creatures, but being over on the top left, or, we're throwing me off. So you're oh, right. okay. Yeah. Yes. You're, so in that case, she'll pass through absolutely. and um, yeah, try to get it from the rear. Okay, no problem. Like, like, like so? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. And what's the plus for attacking from that? Plus, plus four. four. Plus four, yeah. Okay. Oh, plus five, because she has the bless. That's right. Uh, AC4? AC4 is not enough. You needed AC5. Bummer. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Okay. Uh, Averell's chilling. Raymond? Uh, Raymond is going to bring the hammer down. All right. So on the just, one that is. Yeah, he could have grabbed one. Yeah. Okay. And then it goes to Castanus. Cast, uh, delay. Castanus is delaying Zaydana. She's guarding the rear, right? Yeah. No, she's guarding the workers. The workers, right. Okay. Horaeus, Scavenus. Scavenus will shoot back into uh, melee, try to hit that, um, try to hit that one. This Last is, one was. all right. Higlack. All right. Higlack is going to smack the bejesus out of that remaining, yep. uh, uh, yep. There we go. There we go. There he is. <laughs> and he does eight points. Not quite enough to kill it. Dang! Wow. Hey, the Those creatures. Are tough little buggers. Oh, they, yeah, they're, they're tough, tough little buggers. Creature squeals in agony. Um, Bombor is chilling in the back. Griffin is chilling yeah. in the back. Aria chilling in the back. Terenius. Yeah. I'm just going to hold. All right. And go to another round. And it looks like it will be um, Andravis will be the first person involved in the fight who's acting. All right, let's try another arrow. All right. So Ooh. that kills it, and then you're able to dispatch this one. Okay. So that ends. That's where the 17 ends. experience. That ends the fight. <laughs> okay, so uh, the bombardier beetles are dead. Silence returns. The uh, workers start breathing. I've never seen bugs that big. You? Oh, man. Only up your wife's pussy. Oh. <laughs> 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 You think that was funny? It was pretty funny, actually, Steve. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go uh, appraise their their carcasses while okay. we resume normal digging. And our moves up right. the corner again. So um, you can, they, you uh, can uh, also they treat can... black with um, huh? uh, concrete. Yes, Please. I should say that. Just, I'll take care of that first then. Okay. Yeah, just roll a D3. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So uh, um, the uh, the bombardier beetles actually have acid vestibules, which are worth 20 gold pieces each as a magical component. So you could get 80 gold pieces worth of acid vestibules. I, I will definitely think that we will collect those. Okay. Yeah. So it takes you a little bit of time because you have to kind of get out your paring knife and, you know. <laughs> um, actually, actually, you know that they have them, but you actually, you don't have animal husbandry. You have healing, Willie? He, yeah. he has healing one, yeah. You have healing one. Does anybody have multiple ranks of healing or animal husbandry? I, no. I think we got okay. to throw them into a sack. All right. So unfortunately, you don't know where to find the um, the, uh, the the acid sacks and the creatures. So you like asking me to find the spleen or something? I have no idea where it is. Um, so the creatures weigh um, our creatures are man sized and they weigh about one hundred and twenty <laughs> pounds each. So you're not going to throw them in a sack. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, what we can do is we can when we escort the workers back out, we can take them with us, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's not have, worth it. <laughs> we can have the workers sling them on a uh, staff or something and carry yeah. them. Yeah. Like porters. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. All right. So, All right. Oh, was that worth 17 experience points? <laughs> we'll just um, stack them in the corner. Oh, then. Yeah, let me uh, let me go ahead and get you the... Uh, let me make sure you got Sorry, it. Sorry, I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming of level four. Okay. <laughs> okay so we have to fight out to 16 and a half points. Yeah, it, yeah, 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 one short. Exactly. 
to the Eterno, the Adana. All right, so now we've got the party updated. And we will give you guys your big sexy XP. Ooh. <laughs> you guys ready? Ready for sexy. Woo, let's XP. get it. Yeah. <laughs> what, eight points? <laughs> I need nine more. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yep. I think okay. we can have I think we can have Piraeus lay hands on Higlack, get him back up to twenty one. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Just as long as you get consent. I mean Hira you know, Higlack consents. It, it but he he would also point out it's only three hit points. You may or you, you may want to hold off and uh, use that on somebody who really needs it. Well, remember we we've, we've got the staff, so we did not use the staff on you today. Yeah, that's true. Yep. All right, yeah. Horaeus will yeah, uh, and, and. lay hands. New cadet, may I touch you? <laughs> uh, so. That restores two hit points per level. He's level two, so that should uh, take care of it for you know. Oh, he's up yeah, to full he's back up. Yeah, he's back up to full. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to use all of the hit points though, when you do lay on hands. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. So when we uh, when we get out of here, got one more left. Yeah. We need to figure out where those the city watch has a skiff or some kind of a, you know, what am I trying to say? Like a pier or something down here because we need a boat. We just need like a flat bottom. We need our own skiff. We can just transport stuff around in and, you know, pull it along and keep out of this muck. <laughs> That's a good idea. It'd be a shitty skiff, though. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Well, the workers, um, the workers get back to work. And uh, well, why is he? Why is he so big? Get back to it, men. Workers ought to be pretty happy. They didn't, you know, they weren't in, in any danger whatsoever. We took all the hits and, you know, took care of the problem. Yeah. Yes, yes. You and they have story, and they have stories that get taken back to the drinking buddies. Right. Gosh. Sorry, these tokens are being very strange. Um, okay, so. Uh, I just saw the worker's name is Familia Spin. I remember that guy. Oh, is it, is it showing as Familia Spin? It's not supposed to. I, it's supposed to I think it's supposed work. to be generic. It's just supposed to be showing as a worker because there's going to be 10 of them. Yeah. I just figured it was generic. But, uh, anyway. He was one of the legionnaires I think we failed to recruit. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, and then they're kind of obviously they're doing like a little bit of a uh, thing like this to get wreckage out of the um, the fire bucket line. Yeah, I like they're doing like a bucket brigade here. Hi ho, hi ho. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, well, they're angling on that way. I'm going to shift a little bit yeah. more this way so I can see. Hey, Brombor. 
Brown boy, this is bring back memories of your people. <laughs> and your not oil funny. in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, the, uh, the workers continue to work and work and work. And then um, one of them shouts, uh, we've broken through. And then a moment later, you hear a gong. <laughs> Oh um, boy! <laughs> and then I need to roll to see if the workers are surprised, and you guys can roll to see if you are surprised. Roll d6. For the, roll for the party. Roll a d. Roll a d6. Want to roll that? Then you... That was me. That was me for the for the workers. <laughs> oh okay. The workers are not surprised. They've seen it all. That's right. The foreman's coming. <laughs> They're the ones who are awake because they're actually doing work, but we're just standing around. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. What was oh that? Who, who rolled okay. which? I rolled for her, you know, Horaeus, and somebody, I guess, was uh, clicked on Idlac. Yeah, I asked for a roll for the party as a whole. So um, I'm going to say you guys are surprised. So Is um, Andravis? Andravis <laughs> is not surprised. That's actually okay. correct, yes. So... Um, Roll a D6. Roll a D6. Na, 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 na. Sorry. Okay. Uh, old blast from the past. <laughs> All right. So, Andromas, you're the only one in the fight. Okay. <laughs> Unless anybody else has a bonus against surprise, I don't think so. Well, wait, Bombor does because oh, he's um, 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 Scavenus does, does as well. Scavenus does as well because he's an explorer. Okay, so Scavenus is also in the fight, and Bombor also. And Castinus took and Castinus uh, because he combat has reflexes. He took combat reflexes. Okay, all right, very exciting. <laughs> Dad, Castinus, what kind of venture business are you in that you should <laughs> like? It's a karate chop. <laughs> All right. So um, that chime goes off, and Scavenus Omir definitely feels like I have a, has, a, has a bad feeling about this. <laughs> did the direction, did the gong come from the direction of the where the workers were working? Yes, it did. For, yes, it did. Okay. okay, let's then if if we're waiting, let's order everybody out. I, I should actually, yeah. Uh... All right, well, so Sca remember, most of you are surprised. So Scavenus is an NPC. Um, so what is he can't give orders to people. So what is Scavenus going to do? Let's see, he is. He will, he will, so he's at the, he's at the rear. He's going to ready. He has precise shooting. He can fire at anything that comes out of whatever, whatever might be coming at us. Okay. That sounds great. That sounds great. Okay. All right. So um, next up is Bombor, also an NPC, so not able to give orders. And Bombor is going to ready his bow if any targets come. Um and from the direction of the gong. Okay. As Got long it. as he has a clear shot since he doesn't have precise shooting. All right. So the next up are a massive swarm of rats erupts That's unfortunate. out of the rubble. That's um, a lot of rats. Yeah, it's it's thousands and thousands of rats, and they're just descend upon your poor, um, your poor workers. Oh no! And, yeah. So let's see what happens to them. All right. So they must make uh, paralysis saving throws. Um, It's plus four bonus to their saving. Okay. Has it been within the hour of Newton casting his spell? Or has it been longer than that? Um, it has been one hour. So uh, we'll say we'll say we'll say that the spell is still up. So, 
All right, so I have to, um, one, two, three, four, five of these guys need to make saving throws. Fail, 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 fail. One succeeds. Okay, so um, one worker makes it out of the rat swarm. The others are absolutely... Um, overwhelmed by the thousands of rats, and you hear horrible screaming. Um, and it's got my eyes! Oh, it's eating my dinner! Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay. Terrible. I hope um, you have another sleep, Serenius! <laughs> Please tell me you got another sleep in that job. Captain, this is up. <laughs> I'm still going. Oh, you just skipped Andravis. Oh, sorry, Andravis, yep. Um, well, for one thing, I'm just going to tell the, yell those other workers, get out of there. Oh, no, yeah, they're, they, well, they're, they're up on, uh, oh, they got killed, but they're on two, so they don't get to go yet. So. Oh, okay. But I'm, I'll give them the instructions that we've been waiting for. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know how swarms work. Can I, can I shoot arrows at these things? You don't know um, how swarms work. Okay, well, I'm going to try shooting arrows at these things. Okay. <laughs> so you start firing arrows into the swarm, and... Um, you quickly discover that uh, there are just too many of them moving too fast. Every arrow kills one, but you'll run out of arrows before you run out of rats. Okay. Okay. All right, Castanus. Um, is there any... Uh... Okay, so the order's already been given that the rest of the workers are, are leaving. Yeah, right? they're, they're mm -hmm. fleeing, yeah. Okay. Flee for your lives! Don't you have fire bombs? Yeah. So, I would, so what uh, Cassinus will, he will ready, he will ready military oil. Because he has, yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. So then. Oh, I'm you casting. Know. Yeah, let me yep. add everybody to the battle here. Sorry. Destroy this battle. And uh, hold on, hold on. Everyone. I am cast. I am casting also. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, because I'm. I'm wondering how a swarm worked. Actually, is all right. Andravis is up. Um, I'm gonna be holding because I don't really know what to do. Okay. Cast <laughs> how many arrows would you say I shot before I figured out not to shoot any more arrows? Two, five. Two? No. Okay. Two. Yeah, you're like, okay, no, right. this is not. Well. Okay. Right. So I'm, I'm going to hold until I have, see a better option. All right, got it. Castanus. Castanus is going to throw his military oil at the at the opening, like as far down as as, uh, as he can, the opening that they're coming out of. Uh, okay, got it. Make the roll. Boom. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good hit. Um, the uh, oil splashes all over the swarm. Give me a D8 for damage. Nice. Nice. Okay. So you did uh, how much? Eight points. Nice. Okay, so um, the uh, rats are now shrieking in agony as um, hundreds of them are caught in the napalm, the, the napsa that blasts out of your thing, um, and the smell sizzles up in the air, and it smells kind of like chicken. Um, <laughs> That's kind of totally random. Okay. Well, I mean, rat is a, you know, rat on a stick is a popular delicacy in some parts of Samaria. All right. Um, let's see. So Castanus, Griffin. Um, well, let's see. Griffin has, he's holding one of the guys holding a lantern and he has lantern oil. So I, I mean, I imagine he will ready a lantern oil. Lantern Can oil you light it and throw it in? Thing. Oh, okay. Then in that case, I was hoping at least do a little bit, but uh, never mind. He um, will continue. You sure he doesn't have a military? I, I think some of those guys were. I was looking. I don't, I don't see it on here, so I don't okay. think so. Okay. okay. Um, so he will full defense. <laughs> okay. I don't know if there's anything which helps with saves of that sort, but uh, 
Um, okay, yeah. so he's just on full defense. Got it. All right. Okay, so the workers on their turn are just going to scream in absolute stark terror. Since half their friends just got killed and they don't know uh, the direction to leave because they were blindfolded on the way in. <laughs> so, uh, Avaro, you're up. I'm sorry, that's... Uh, oh, did, 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 we, did we skip a bunch? Oh, we did. I'm sorry. We skipped down too far. Yeah, so Raymond's up. Got it. Okay. So, um... So my... Let me see. So we, we still have Bless up. You so still have Bless I up, will, yes. Okay, cool. So let me see here. So my Holy Chant goes off. So it gives us holy. a plus two on saving throughs. Plus two on saving? Very nice. All right. Raymond begins to chant to Aminar, his stentorian voice thundering like uh, yeah. bolts from the heaven with every sound echoing through the water. Okay, Arya. So... Yeah, so just for reference, guys, with the whole with the with the bless, you have a plus one again, uh, plus one saves, and then with the holy chant, you have plus two saves, so a total of plus three to your saves. Um, uh, saving throw bonus from blessings only against magical fear. No. Oh, okay, got it. okay. So never mind. So just plus two with the holy plus chant. two Thank plus you. three versus fear. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aria. Oh, Aria. Oh, goodness. Let me let me take a quick look at her sheet right. here. I don't she's, think she has military delaying. oil. Higlack. Yep, she's delaying. All right. Um, Higlack, seeing that there is a big problem yep. over to the side, is going to go ahead and move into uh, – try and get into melee range with the, the swarm. Okay. And is that, I can't really tell if I'm in a good spot so or you, not. So, um, you want to, you want to move into the swarm. Um, you will risk being engulfed yeah. by the rats. I, I mean, you know, when it comes right down to it, very few of us have enough hit points to withstand it. So, um, yeah, you might want to save those for something bigger though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah, that's yep, fair. Yep, yep, yep. That's fair. Um, all right. So instead of moving, then he will turn and um, crap. He really doesn't ha actually know he's going to move here and ready his bow for anything other than a rat coming down that hall. Okay, okay. great. Great. Um, so that was Higlack, Zayadana. Uh, Zayadana is going to move uh, back towards. Wait a minute, what are those? They're terrified. So okay, got it, got it. They're all see. terrified. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, she's oh. going to. Yeah, so she's going to move away from the swarm, get to this this ledge here. So, right there. Yep. Okay. So she runs. Yep. And the then, uh, yeah. Yep. And then for Arya, Arya has uh, military oil. So she's going to light one and uh, – hold on. She's right – is she is she next to Griffin? Where is she? She's she's further down. She's right here. Got it. Okay, so she's going to go up to Griffin, Uh huh. light her, one of her military oils, and toss it. All right. Well, going up to Griffin and lighting the oil, and you're done. So that's your movement action. And okay. That action. Okay. 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 So uh, then it goes to Avaro. Okay, Avaro's got military oil, so he wants to light it and throw it on those, uh, onto these guys, onto the mat, the rats. All can right. he move and then throw it? Or do, no, is that he everything? Can, he can light it and throw it, or he can move and light it. All right, so he's going to light it and throw it. Okay, make the throw. All right, so straight up D20. Mm -hmm. Can't see my... Uh, which macro I have here. Okay. All right. So uh, the fire lands right on the swarm. Give me a D8 for damage. 
Okay. Um, hundreds more rats screaming in agony from the burn. And, um, okay. Uh, Scavenous? Um, Scavenous, he has one military oil, but he has to, um, because he was carrying a uh, reading with crossbow, he has to now right. light it and, and prepare it. So he'll throw well, it. Well, you can, you can drop the crossbow if you want. So you can, okay. dropping is free, so you can drop the crossbow. Okay, and then he will try to go long um, into the into the swarm also. Okay, do it. Oh, oh no. no! All right, so Scavenus drops the crossbow, and unfortunately when he does so, the crossbow arrow goes off and strikes right into the flame that's in his hand, which explodes on him. Oh, Jesus. So uh, roll a d8 for damage on Scavenus. Okay, good. So Scavenus is now on fire. Uh, And then give me a saving throw versus blast from Zayadana. Oh, wow. Okay, hold hold on. Let me... uh, Oh, goodness. Hold on. Zayadana blast, but she's got a plus two... On that save, so blast. Here it is. So roll, roll. Big so, sad. Big sad. So yeah, she takes. She takes two points as well of uh, fire damage. <laughs> ah! She screams in pain. You idiot. I'm gonna come off hold if I. If I, I want to ask if it's possible to make this move. But if can I, I have a I have a blanket in my ruck. Can I come uh-huh. off of hold, grab my blanket, rush over to Scavenus and try to put him out? Um. So you could get your blanket out of your ruck and rush over to him, but you can't do okay. all three things. You know. Right, I'll, um, um, you could just go throw him in the muck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, he, you know, he has a plus two on his saves. Oh, he does. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. I will throw him. Yeah, in yeah. Well, All right, you're like stop, two. drop, and roll. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have any of, So cloud of noxious um, steam comes up. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I think we're headed right. back to the bath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um Bombor. Um Bombor only sees rats and has already seen um Andravis, you know, shooting into them with no effect. So he's gonna hold off for any targets that aren't yep. rats. Okay, Augilor. He is smarter and he's going to yep. run back out of the combat all right and uh ready to defend against anything all right so he's just gonna try and ward off the rats if they come for him yeah horaeus horaeus is not the kind of man who, who would back off from a fight um gosh this mm, okay He's not going to be able to do anything against the rats, though. We need right. any effect. He, he's Wait going, for the next. He's going to back up, and he is going to take out the torch he has in his inventory. And okay. any rats coming by, he's going to attempt to burn, set them on fire. Okay. So uh, then it goes over to Terenius. You had cast a spell. What did you cast? He's casting slumber right into the midst of it. Okay. All right. So the rats fail their saving throw and are knocked unconscious. Wow. And uh, as they lay there sleeping in the pools of burning uh, naphtha, um, that destroys the swarm. They continue to pop off one at a time and explode as That's they right. sizzle. <laughs> it's like popcorn. Firecrackers. Yeah. 
Yes. All right. So this, uh, with, with the doorway now open, this is a good stopping point for this session. It's 1240. So oh. why, don't we do, why don't we do any healing or whatever we need to do, and then um, and then we'll be ready for next session. Sounds and good. And also to see if the rat storm is worth nine experience points. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Let's see how many experience points the rat swarm is worth. Hilarious. Um, this could be worth eight. I predict eight. <laughs> oh. All right. So it is worth... Let's see. I'm, I'm literally giving you the actual amount, man. Okay, so I'm not cheesing you. Oh, right? I believe you. I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Six! <laughs> <laughs> I was close. Oh, my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> That's two full episodes of like with a, about 150 experience points total. <laughs> the journey of a thousand miles is is only one <laughs> the, one step at a time. Maybe the journey of a thousand cuts. <laughs> so who's who's injured? Um, I mean, we the uh, workers are all dead or alive. The half of them are dead. No, we. Oh, um, uh, Scapin is yeah. right and. I think or was Scavenus it, uh, is the only one who got hurt because he engulfed himself. And Zayadana lost a couple of hit points, too. Yeah, she lost a couple. Oh, yeah. right. 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 It could, not the good news right? is, is we can use Aloe on Scavenus and Zayadana for burn damage. That's right. So, Willie, can you give us yeah. two, two D3 rolls? First for Scavenus, second for Zayadana? Two and uh, Toothy was carrying, so we had we had five doses. We'll have three left. Great, great. No, uh, that's not the best roll. Oh, so that was for Scavenus. Okay, so Scavenus right. took one hit point back. He'd only lost two. All right, yep. she gets two back, so she's good to go. Ah, cooling aloe. She says the adventurer's favorite choice of healing earth. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, actually, by copper tone. <laughs> exactly. Actually, can because Horaeus had one hit point left from lay on hands from Higlack, he could use that on exactly. Scavenus and bring him back up. Okay, that's correct. perfect. Do that. Yeah. Okay. So now, okay. So Horaeus is used. He has used lay on hands. All yep. lay on hands. Yeah. And then. Uh, let's see. Um, Raymond has used two first level spells. No, no, Raymond. they're a uh, second level. There, there's second a couple level, Alex. Yep. Okay. Arya has used yeah. two first level, and Tyrannius has used two first level. Okay. It is 12 30 in the afternoon on the 10th of Vinethyl, and then the wall has been brought down. What lies beyond the rat swarm, gentlemen? What lies beyond? And what are you going to do with the terrified workers? I'm, well, I'm gotta... thinking that we should probably, well, it's like one thing we could do is we could, <clears throat> is we could exfiltrate, move up, you know, rest the day, and then come right back into this. No, 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 can't do that because whatever, whatever is in there is going to disappear. I was gonna say we, we we busted something open. We should press the uh, press the attack, um, but I think we could probably spare, um, you know, one of the uh, assassin, you know, like the assassin to guide them back and then come back in the mid, you know, as we're moving in. Do we care about blindfolding them still, or are we okay just letting you know taking them to the nearest grate and letting them go? I think just take him to the nearest grate and let him go. Yeah. I think, um, um, oh, go ahead. The nearest grate is right here, roughly. Yeah, um, it's not too far, yeah. So I say we double, we, I say we give him, you know, <laughs> give him two gold apiece um, as an apology and, um, and let him go. Tell him to thought. get out of here. Yeah. 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 Okay, so workers Don't, you know, sent to the surface. So it was her, it was it was a uh, hazardous duty, but we we also compensate well. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so we, what, for what, the ones what, that are dead. <laughs> oh, oh, and and also let's let's take the names of their family so we can make sure their family gets paid the same, or something like that. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So we'll, we'll make sure we get them paid as well. Bring their featureless bodies back. What are how much do funeral? How do how much do, do basic funeral expenses cost? Oh, I mean, for for the poor, they just get yeah. taken out. They just get taken out and thrown on a cremation pyre with a bunch of other people. So, oh, so. In <laughs> <laughs> the <Okay>, case, so <laughs> we'll we'll give their families five gold each or something. You know? Sure. All right. So I'll remove the workers, and we um okay. It's a good stopping point. So next session, man, it's going to be interesting. Indeed, it will be. <laughs> so, Willie, you've got one second level spell left, don't you? Correct. Yeah. Which I assume I could burn for one of my first levels if I wanted to, or? No, no, they're, they're separate. You can a lot. only use it for the level two? Mm hmm. Ah. Yeah. I'll have to go read that section again. Yeah. There are some types of there are some types of casters that can do that that can just treat them as generic stall points, but mm. mages cannot. So. Okay, well that was fun. Uh, I, I was uh, very surprised um, at actually the course of how that session went. There were a lot of unexpected things happened for me as the GM. <laughs> um, so Newton knows this. When you go into the baths, there's depending on the time you go, there's a five percent chance of meeting various NPCs and just through sheer chance, it was like 5%, 5%, 5% on three major NPCs being in the bath when you were there. So I was like, okay, I guess they know each other and they're hanging out and having a girl's day. Okay, yeah. let's, let's go with it. Yeah. So, that was, uh, so that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. The nice reaction rolls in there too didn't hurt. Yeah. They did not hurt. That's right. That's right. So, okay, cool. So we play in two weeks, guys. All right. All right, gentlemen. Good seeing you all. Thanks, good everybody. See you later. Sounds good. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Good night, y'all. Uh, good night.